So we give praise, esteem, and honor to the Most High Yah, name of Yahusha Hamashiach this day. We get this John 5 and 39. Search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life. And there they which testified me. And you will not come to me that you might have life. I receive not honor from men, but I know you, that you have not the love of Allahim in you. I come in my obvious name, and you receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him you will receive. How can you believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that come from Allahim only? Do not think that I will accuse you to Allah. There is one that accused you, even Moses, in whom you trust. But had you believed Moses, you would have believed me, for he wrote of me. But if you believe not his writings, how should you believe my words? Shoot, I guess. Shoot, hey. Shoot ain't no in between. Shoot, that don't smell like it burnt. <laughs> <laughs> Got something on the stove and left. I just cut off. I just cut off. Proverbs 10 and 12. Well, you were correct. It definitely uh, affect that thermostat. Good. <laughs> Uh, hatred stir up strife, but love covers all sins. So, of course, you know, we're looking at this in regards as you see the strife that's stirred up by the disobedience and blasphemous machinations of idiotic people. But let me ask y'all this question How familiar are you with the Tower of Babel, Babylon, whatever you want to call it? Y'all do know what Babylon and Babel means, correct? It means confusion. So this is one of the things why you see it says the whore of Babylon. So this is a harlot of confusion. And I don't know how many harlots and whores y'all know. But I would be willing to wager that all of them have one thing in common. They are workers of confusion. They're workers of confusion. Say, Every whore, you know, worker of confusion. What about you? You know a few whores, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I know several. Plenty. Young, old, intermediate. And they all love confusion. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? They ain't, they ain't young, they ain't old. You know, they're in the middle. You know what I'm talking about? But remember that Paul made the slow man. Paul made the statement that Elohim is not the author of confusion. So, you know, he's not the one who authored this whore. Now, let's look at this uh, Genesis chapter 11, verse 1. Now, we don't went over this before. And... Uh, one of the aspects of the Tower of Babel, just for memory's sake, is dealing with the fact of that this was the reverse of Pentecost, that everybody was of one language and one speech and could understand one another. And then he scattered the languages. So in order to because they all were one, so we'll sit back and see that. Genesis 11 and 1 is saying the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. So there's a lot of things spoken about why they built the Tower of Babel. But you have to focus specifically on what is stated. You know what I'm saying? Of what they were doing it for. What it says they were doing it for, there is nothing insinuated that it was of evil, evil machinations, if you will. It just says that they wanted to have a name in heaven. If you know the script, Satan ain't never said he wanted to have a name in heaven. So that's one of the first things that you have to click on. Why would that be evil? Because you want your name in heaven. What you were trying to do is you were trying to get to Elohim before it's time. So you were trying to execute something outside of your pay grade. Nevertheless, it said it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, go let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. So let's take a look at something, right? Paul, 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Probably about verse 8. So if you're taking bricks and you're building, that would make you a what? A master builder. Book, book tell you that Yahusha is the chief cornerstone. So you would usually, at least at that time, you use brick to build that uh, to build build things. You know now that they use a, a bevy of things. Now you can get your home out of a cargo container. You know what I'm saying? They're actually supposed to be building a whole apartment complex on the riverside out of cargo containers. You know what I'm saying? That's the new thing. They, they can be built very quickly and very cheaply, and people want to live in them. You know what I'm saying? All right, if you look at you're not familiar with that. Who, you, are any of y'all unfamiliar with the fact that they build apartment complexes out of cargo containers? Yes, that's, that's a new thing. You shall see it very soon, right there on the riverside. Nigga definitely going to be living in the, uh, what's that place that my feet are working? In the Crowley container. They're going to be living in one of them. I feel like I'm 
They do look like they made out of uh, a cargo containers. They probably are. You know what I'm saying? No, I've seen them being built. This is a steel frame, but the outside definitely looked like a cargo container, without question. Uh, because you know, you know, your man, brother Polite, got in trouble for that in Ohio by lying, saying that he was the developer and funder of a apartment complex made out of uh, cargo containers, and the dude who actually was behind that put him on blast for being a liar. And Polite never spoke on it ever again. But that's that's their thing, you know. They houses now out of what you know, wood, wood frame, and all that type of stuff. You know, most investors they like concrete block. They most of them don't like brick. They'll take brick, but they like concrete block. They feel like concrete block lasts longer. You know, can't can withstand. But you're not getting no new house being built out no concrete block. Them people will look you in the face and tell you, you know what? Probably can do that for you, but your house gonna suck. And we're going to tax you. Yeah, most of these houses were framed. The vast majority. That's why they could build them so fast. You know what I'm Because, shoot, most of these are uh, slow, man. You know, most of these subdivisions in this city, you know, they throw them joints up fast. Mass amount of houses. They definitely got it efficient. Yeah, they're definitely efficient. They definitely sent me the, the opportunity to bid on that very project you speak of. So I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, yeah they, they move pretty quick. You know what I mean? You know, it told you, you know, the, who, who recalls how long they said it took for the second temp, temple to be built? 46 years it said that it took for the second temple to be rebuilt. 46 years. I, I can't recall the top of my head if it stated how long the first one took. 46 years. You know what I'm saying? The, and, I, and I imagine if something took 46 years to build right now, people would lose their mind. You know what I'm saying? These niggas, niggas lose their mind if your if your meal is not ready within three minutes, and you have to ask yourself, how can someone cook real food for you in three minutes? You know what I'm saying? Real food take a little bit longer to cook than that, but that's just because of the the society that we live in. So you expect everything to be convenient and everything to be swift and quick. That's why most people want instant gratification and have no patience. You know what I'm saying? Because when you feel like something taking too long, now you're about to have a conniption. You're about to just totally spaz out. That's not a good thing. Usually that's a sign that a person doesn't have the ability to endure any type of tribulation or adversity because you don't have the patience to sustain it. And nevertheless, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, right? By verse 8. We'll pick it up about verse 9. He said, for we are laborers together with Elohim, and you are Elohim's husband husbandry you are Elohim's building according to the grace of Elohim which is given unto me as a wise master builder I have laid the foundation and another build thereon let every man take heed how he build thereupon for no other for other foundation can no man lay that is laid which is Yahusha HaMashiach so let's go back to Genesis 11 we just set back to, to take a look at that for Paul to lay down the framework that to be able to build this place, you had to be a master builder. These people are taking bricks one to another and master builders and a building upon a foundation. Even to build this Tower of Babel, it must be built upon a cornerstone. That cornerstone being Hamashiach. So verse four of Genesis chapter 11, they said, let us, let, they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the whole face of the earth. So their concern was to be separated one from another. So their, their, their objective and what they're trying to do is to stay knitly close together. Yahuwah came down to see the city and tower which the children of men build it. Yahuwah said, behold, the people is one. They all have one language and this they begin to do and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Go to, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. 
So you who scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel. You who did there confound the language of all the earth. And from thence did you who scattered them abroad upon the face of all the earth. So when we get in the kingdom, what does he say language wise? What does the text bear witness to in regards to that? You have one link. We'll go ahead and grab that. Zephaniah 3 and 9. That's a verse of major contention with a lot of people. About is that happening now? When would that happen now? Should you learn Hebrew? Which Hebrew should you learn? All that type of stuff, which is just stuff that gets you distracted on what you need to be focused on, really. Zephaniah 3 and 9. We'll make it seven, Zephaniah 3 and 3. Zephaniah 3 and 3. He said, her princes within her are roaring lions. Her judges are evening wolves. They gnaw not the bones till the morrow. Her prophets are light and treacherous persons. Her priests have polluted the sanctuary. They've done violence to my Torah, which is a, a alluding to the killing of a Mashiach. The just who was in the midst thereof, which is alluding to Mashiach. Oh, you notice when Yahusha always was around people, he was right there in the middle. Same token of what we was looking at as far as the tree of life being in the midst of the garden, because that was the just tree. He will do no iniquity. Every morning do he bring his judgment to light. He failed not, but the unjust know no shame. Now, that's something that we mentioned last night. When you look at what's going on in Babylon, you see what, what, what some of the things he said he was doing to the people in Revelation and they still didn't repent. They paid him to come with the boils like Job. Burned them with the sun, still didn't repent because pride people don't know no shame. See, people who are in that, they ain't gonna know no shame. That's why you got a whole bunch of women walk out here. That's why I had also going back to what I was talking about. A man, oh my, you look like that. She dropped the load on you, sir? No, I have Very well. So, like when I mentioned to y'all, who would objectify a woman more, a man or a woman? It's going to always be the woman objectify herself more because she knows no shame. You know what I'm saying? Unless a dude, I'm telling you, man, a dude, unless a dude's a lame, he not going to want, you know what I'm saying, this old lady with all her cakes and her yams out because he don't want nobody looking at his woman. Because, you know, see, there's a difference. But, you know, you're supposed to have, because, again, you who has this, a healthy jealousy over who you with. Not jealousy to the point that I'm going to kill you for having a conversation with someone, but you know, that's mine. Okay. You know what I'm saying? That's mine. So if that's mine, what, what did Alahim say? He's what? He's a what? Jealous Alahim. Don't fool with nobody else. What man in his right mind gonna be with a woman? He cool with, yeah, man. She hollering at that nigga around the corner. And you cool with that. If you cool with that, what is that evidence of? What do you believe that's evidence of? If the man's with her, this is his wife, he knows that she is entertaining another man and he has no problem with that. No, it means he cares absolutely nothing about her in any shape, form, or fashion. You know what I'm saying? Don't even have to be anything about what he's doing. He doesn't have a love for that woman. He don't care. You know what I'm saying? The problem coming at it when you like, who you talking to? Why are you talking to him? Now you need to go see someone because you have a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? Because that's not normal. Do you know what I'm talking about? That's on either side. If you always worrying about who somebody talking to, that's not jealousy right there. You have a mental problem. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not normal. You don't, you don't, you don't do that. You who are like, don't fool with nobody else. You mind. That's different. Do you know what I'm saying? Everybody should. Have. That means because if you don't, you don't care nothing about them. Do you know what I'm saying? If, if you who ain't care nothing about you, then he wouldn't care what God you mess with. Are you over there with they gun? Shoot, tell me about it later when you get back to the house. Do you know what I'm saying? You don't care nothing about him at all. And I know like we said right. We were talking about this last night now, when we were talking about because y'all because a dude I know was like somebody coming at her husband or this a woman he knows husband saying that he needs to take another wife. You know what I'm saying? That scenario is different because if we if we were in a different time, raised up in a different culture, none of y'all would have a problem with that. You know what I'm saying? You were never raised in that fashion, so you're automatically going to be offended by that. You know what I'm saying? There was no offense 
with, with, with Hagar and Sarah. Sarah just was like, your son is over here mocking my son and he ain't no heir. You know what I'm talking about? You need to go. You know what I'm saying? Rachel and Leah issue wasn't with, I don't want to share him. They had their own stuff going on because Leah already knew that Jacob didn't warn her. You know what I'm saying? So she was trying to win him over. Rachel was thoroughly unconcerned. You know what I'm talking about? Why? Because I already know this nigga love me. But then also, they were raised that way. That was a cultural thing. A man to have four, five, six, seven wives would have not offended them. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, that's going to offend you now because, you know, you're raising a culture that tells you everything revolves around you. So when something of that nature is broached, you're going to be like, boom. I'm not understanding that if you believe in along those lines, why do you approach women like you selfish, rebellious, wicked woman when you know they weren't raised that way? What you think she's going to do? Sure, not a problem. Do you know what I'm saying? That, that doesn't make common sense. Do you know what I'm saying? You should expect resistance because that is a foreign concept to this person. That's what I'm talking about. about. You don't you don't come with change too quickly because people are naturally going to resist. You know what I'm saying? You go tell somebody, stop smoking crack. Well, I've been smoking crack for 15 years. So, yeah, I'm just going to stop smoking crack. I'm about to go to the trap. I'll see you when I get back. Maybe next week. You know what I'm saying? And that's how that works. You can't you can't do people like that. Human beings are creatures of habit. You know what I'm saying? You're, you're accustomed to doing the same things over and over and over and over again. So when you have to break that, it's a terrifying situation because you don't know how you'll be able to function in a different paradigm. But then when you realize when you actually do change, it was really not that difficult. It was just the fears and insecurities you had in your own mind. Do you know what I'm saying? It's not even really that difficult. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just transitioning to doing something that you're not accustomed to doing. Once you do that, it's cool. But we know scripture wise, shoot, there's not too many people that have more than one wife. Uh, in the beginning like that, you know, the first person who knows the first person who is mentioned of having more than one. No, he's not the first. Oh, no. Um, it indeed it is. Yeah. Um, Jamal. Yeah, and his name is Lamech. He had two wives. He also stated how he killed a man. You know what I'm saying? But but Adam had one wife. Uh, Isaac had one wife. Abraham had one wife. Yeah, You know No, this is before Noah. That. That's why I thought it was the first man mentioned of. Uh, the first man mentioned of having a child, I mean, having two wives, is in Genesis 4, probably about verse 27. If my memory serves me correctly. About Genesis about 4 and 20. 4 and 5. There's Lamech, because Lamech said something about uh, he killed the man. And he was the creator of iron. Matter of fact, let me look at this. Story. Yeah, because I, 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 yeah, I, I, that was his son. Right? They say, yeah. yeah. He took two wives, uh, did you fall? And she was two. Yeah. 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 Ada and Zelia. You know what I mean? This is the this is the first individual that had more than one. But Adam had one. Hagar was not Abraham's wife. She was a handmaid. You know what I'm saying? Because people always say that Abraham had two wives. That was not his wife. In his lifetime. Because he did not marry Keturah until after Sarah died. That's when he married Keturah. He was not married to Keturah and Sarah at the same time. Uh, Isaac had one wife. And if it would have been up to Jacob, he would have had one wife. Jacob did not have four wives. He had two. Those other two women were handmaids who were given to him because of competition between two sisters. You know what I'm saying? That also shows the nature that women are comparative and competitive by nature when it comes to certain things. You know what I'm saying? Because a woman will always compare her life to someone else's. You know, men usually don't do that. And if they do that, that's usually because they've been raised a lot of, around a lot of feminine energy. You know what I'm saying? Because a man don't sit back and say, yeah, man, you see her, you see his, you see his shoes and his outfit. Nigga, look at this. You hear this whole nigga. 
What's wrong with you? You want to be like, I want to be like you. If that's not a person that's not a mentor in your life, you're a homosexual as far as I'm concerned. You know what I'm saying? Because clearly you're having some uh, abnormal fantasies about another man that you should not be having. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm saying that if that person is not a direct influence on your life, then why would you want to model yourself after a man whom you have never met? I mean, I say that. You ever hear people talking about when they meet celebrities, how they feel after they meet them? Because you had a delusion in your head of who you thought this person was. And now they're not who you thought they were. Now you're disappointed. But that's you for being an idiot because you had an abnormal thought process of someone you didn't know in your head. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with giving honor to people that you actually know and wanting to model yourself after characteristics of people you actually know. It's nothing wrong if you read stuff by people who are in business or do certain things and you want to model some of the, the strategies that they use. But when you actually want to be or have the life of another person, that's covetedness and you're going to hell. You're an idolater. That's not normal. You don't do stuff like that. But back to Zephaniah, man. Three and six. I'm sorry that you're sad, Mark. Mar, the only child I ever seen in my life, be crying and said, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't mad at you, man. He trying to calm himself down. So I'm happy. Mar, are you happy? Are you happy? I'm sorry to hear that. Maybe you will be later. Zephaniah 3 and 6. I have cut off the nations. Their towers are desolate. That's why we came here, right? Say so he doesn't cut off the nations. The towers are desolate. I made their streets waste that none pass by their cities are destroyed so that there is no man and there is no inhabitant. Now, this is in the book of Zephaniah. And he's saying the same thing like what's in Isaiah 23 about Tyre and Zidon. The same thing that said about Babylon. I'm going to destroy the whole thing and nobody lived there. He said, I said, surely you will fear me. You will receive instruction so the dwelling should not be cut off. Howsoever, I punished them, but they rose early and corrupted all their doings. So, so this goes again to what I just mentioned about all them plagues and them vials that we heard. He said, surely if I if I scorch them with the sun, they'll repent and, and take this correction and chastisement I'm going to give them. But what did they say they did? They said, nah, we ain't going to do it. He said, surely I'm going to send out these scorpions and they're going to sting a man and they're going to think they gonna, they want to die, but death going to flee from them. Y'all familiar with that verse when he said men going to want death and death is going to run away? He said, surely they'll repent after I do that. And they say, no, we can't. You know what I'm saying? You just think about that, how proud you have to be. How proud you got to be. What was the other one? Oh, he, he, he made it go dark. Put it on, put, put the plague and they put the vial on the seat of the beast. Surely you'll repent. They say, no, nah, nigga, I hate you more. And there's many other plagues. Let's read a couple because I just feel like sharing. Let's go to Revelation 6, I believe. Might be chapter 8. And, and if you recall, and this is a fresh memory because, you know, what happened when, when we were in Egypt, when he did the same thing? Did they repent then? No, they did not. He said he hardened Pharaoh's heart, but not just Pharaoh, but everybody there. What are all the plagues he signed? He signed locusts, frogs. He made it go dark, killed their firstborn. I know I'm forgetting. The Turned the water into blood. Like and remember, that's why he said, "I'm Yahuwah, I change not." So every this and the and, and what's the number one reason why he gonna do the same plagues in Egypt and Babylon? What y'all think that would be the number one reason why he would do that? That's it. Period. Point blank. Period. Point blank. They say he he remember it tells you in the book of Jeremiah. He said, you know, he says, "As I live, it will no longer be said Yahuwah lives that brought the children of Yasharal." Out of out of Egypt, but out of the north country. You understand? So he wants you to know that when that water turned to blood, you you remember y'all read about that, right? You had a movie with Charlton Heston. He did it. You know, you remember that type of stuff. You had your little Prince of Egypt movie and all that type of stuff. Thought it was a game. Yeah, that's me, my nigga. You heard about me, right? You know about me? Oh, you don't know about me yet? Let me send these. Let me send these scorpions through. Maybe you know about me then. Oh, you still don't know about me? Let me let me make it go dark for you real quick. Maybe you maybe you'll remember me then. That's the that's why I told you a gangster. That's what gangsters do. Oh, you must ain't heard about me. Let me show you. You know what I'm saying? Let me show you who I am. Cause y'all think it's a game. Oh, it would be a country north of 
either Babylon or north of the land itself. You know what I'm saying? See, that's when the brothers come in and say, that's North America. Let me show you the verse I'm talking about where I just mentioned. Jeremiah 16 and 15. Sixteen and fourteen, more specific. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith Yahuwah, that it shall not be no more said, Yahuwah lived that brought up the children of Yasharal out of the land of Mishraim, but Yahuwah lived that brought up the children of Yasharal from the land of the north and from all the lands whither, whither he have driven them, and I will bring them again into their own land. That I gave unto the Abbas. Yeah, he just asked that question too, Brother Harrison. It's mainly an area that's going to be north of Babylon or north of what you call it, uh, the Jerusalem. Now you have to also recall that in Isaiah the 16th chapter, he said that uh, who knows the land that he told to hide us? Moab. Moab. Who's not familiar with that? You ain't familiar how you eating them chips. Them chips good. Disrespectful little bastard. I said it. You know what I'm talking about? You don't know what I'm talking about. I said the 16th child, then you don't tell that in life. You know you didn't know. It's all right though, because you're finna know right now. And then I'm gonna ask you again. And if you give me the wrong answer, I'm gonna tell your mom. Isaiah chapter 16 and verse 1. Say, so send you the lamb to the ruler from the land, from Selah to the wilderness, unto the mount of the daughter of Zion. For it shall be that as a wandering bird cast out of the nest, so the daughters of Moab shall be at the fords of Arnon. Take counsel and execute judgment. Make your shadow as the night in the midst of the noonday. Hide the outcast. Beray not him that wander. Let my outcast dwell with you, Moab. Be you a covert to them from the face of the spoiler. For the extortioner isn't at an end. And the spoiler cease, and the oppressors are consumed out of the land. And in mercy shall the throne be established, and he shall sit upon it in the truth of the tabernacle of David, judging and seeking judgment, hasting righteousness. Now, this is the question. Why are you an outcast? Why do you need to be hidden? Why are you wandering? You could use that. But it's also something else that we didn't look at. What do we read in Jeremiah? Jeremiah, what well, we were talking about in Jeremiah, because we actually haven't got to it in 51. Actually, we did get it to a little bit in 50. But he told you to do it in Revelation 18. And what did he tell you to do? And then he told everybody to go back to their lands. Well, if you're leaving from out of Babylon, then you need somewhere to hide. And I don't have the map in front of me, but you might be more proficient in that off my memory. But I believe Moab is north of, is north of us. No, I don't. Huh? I don't think so. It is technically north. It's north. I thought we were going to I mean, you could look at it in both, because he's saying. Take my outcast and bewray those that want. See, the beast coming for you in Revelation 12 because you're standing up for the word. This is coming after what the two witnesses had done, done in Revelation 11. But when you turn around and you look at what he told you to do, and we're going to actually read it. We're actually going to read something in Jeremiah 51, which will confirm this assertion. You know what I'm saying? That you on the run. You know what I'm talking about? And because you on the run, you need somewhere to go. Because he told you to get up out of there. Because what did he just say? The spoiler is at an end. The extortioner is at an end. Because now I'm going to get ready to come see Babylon. So you all need to get up out of there. Come on to Revelation 8. That's why you can't use and say, come out over my people and make it a current conversation. Correct. Correct, Brother Harris. You can't make that a current conversation. Because that's not what he's talking about. Because it's, it's apparent from what we read in Jeremiah and what you can see in Revelation that the wrath is it's no different. Truth be told, that joint no different than what he did in Sodom and Gomorrah. What did he tell the righteous to do in Sodom and Gomorrah? Let's look and see. Don't look at me like that. Tell your mama. You know what she's going to tell you? You better behave your 
I wish you gonna tell. You. She ain't gonna tell you that. Your mama don't care about your grades. Let me find out what I, what verse I want to use. Genesis chapter nineteen, verse twelve. And the men said unto Lot, Have you here any besides son-in-law and your sons and your daughters and whatsoever you have in the city? Bring them out of this place. For we will destroy this place because the cry of them is waxing great before the face of Yahuwah, and you have sent us to destroy it. And Lot went out and spake unto his sons-in-law, which married his daughters, and said, Up, get you out of this place, for Yahuwah will destroy this city. But he seemed as one that mocked unto his son-in-laws. Remember, I said we didn't read it in Second Peter. He said, In the last days, there'll be what? Scoffers. Saying, Where is the sign of his coming? So I will grab that Psalm 79 last night. Well, why should the heathen say, Where is their Allahim? Because that's how they feel. I seen in the video today, the brother had showed the lady had her shirt. It said, Pro-black. Uh, pro-brown, pro-homosexual, pro-trans, pro-science, and something else. But the key point of the pro-science is, you know what that means if somebody said they're pro-science? They're atheists. You know what I'm saying? That's an atheist. Because they have to use, and, I, and y'all already know that. Y'all went through these people's school system. That's what they teach. Especially once you get to higher education, they're teaching you to be an atheist. You know what I'm saying? You may not realize that. That's what another reason why our people shouldn't be so gung-ho as sending your children to those environments if they have not been properly prepared for what they're going to face. Because it's a strong chance your child will come back and not believe in anything. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're doing. And it really, truth be told, it started from kindergarten on up. It's they're teaching your child to be an atheist. You know what I'm saying? Because the mass majority of those who create the curriculums in these schools are atheists. They don't believe in nothing. You know what I'm saying? In nothing. But that's another conversation for another time. Because you better watch them crackers if you're sending your turn to them. You better watch them. Your turn be coming back talking about they're they already teaching them about trannies and punks. Ain't no way I walk in the classroom and spit in the teacher face if you handed my child a book with a tranny in it. But what is that? That's confusion though. Because you got four, five-year-old kids confused about what their sexuality is. Mommy, I want to be a girl, son. You have a penis. But the teacher said I can be a girl. I can identify whatever I want. This is what they tell in four, five-year-old children. How is that child brain developed enough to make the distinction that this woman is evil? She can't make that distinction. Let your child like their teacher. Now it could cause conflict between you and your child because the child likes the teacher. And you telling them the teacher don't know what she's talking about. That you're a boy, son. You're not a girl. But, you know, Miss Jones lets me put on this and put on that. You already got people who let their turn dress as the opposite gender talking about let them be free. How a five-year-old boy want to decide he want to put on a skirt? How does that define being free? I thought nakedness was free. How being a they done free? took it a step further. I'm free. They say, I, I, I'm free to be who I want to be. I want to be a girl. I don't have any, any, but I want to be a girl. But my mom, my mama, like this here, right? My mama can pay to make me one. You know that nigga was kind of so hard. Another video, that nigga was like, you know, Isaac Ray. I mean, Issa, I would die in laughing. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> he was like, he thinks he is a man. That's his personal opinion. He does though. He does though. He just was like with her. He was saying the relation of her her shoulder to hip ratio. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Shoot. She, one thing about it though, the women he do say that about do have some strong features in their face. You know what I'm saying? They might be very handsome women once you take off that makeup. You know what I'm talking about? But that nigga said something about that nigga was killing her. That nigga told Gail King, say that wig been holding on for 30 years. That nigga say you take it off, you're gonna look like Charles Barkley underneath. <laughs> I said, Good lord, don't do Gail like that. Gail been wearing the same wig for a long time though. You do know that, right? She's been wearing the same wig since the 90s coming on Oprah's show. But guess what? I mentioned that because Oprah been teaching your children and every, all black women love Oprah and she's been teaching your son. He can be a little girl. Your daughter can be, you know what I'm saying? Be a boy. And they cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Because y'all already know this. Y'all remember when people used to get upset be like, you know, black women always supporting these comedic niggas who dress up like women and act like women? Because most niggas ain't supporting no homo stuff. 
You know what I'm saying? I ain't support no punk stuff. Now they done started to buckle because uh, they want to keep having sex. So they be like, you know, they with it because that woman with it. Well, you know, women support homosexuals real quick. Super quick. You don't see no dudes hanging out with no punks. You know, so several black women walk around here got good friends that's good homosexuals. You know what I'm talking about? They promote homosexual agendas. You know what I'm talking about? And all that. And this is known. Nobody don't like to say it because everybody want to have this image that the black woman is this, that, that, and the third, and not that she's not a destroyer of all the things that she claims that she loves and upholds. Because I see it on the news and in stuff entirely too much. And I see it from too many women's conversation online that you're full of crap. You know what I'm saying? That you don't really love black men like you say you do. Brother, I know, say, black men marry outside of their race more than any other group of people. And I'm like, where you getting that information from? Because that's a narrative. I just don't believe that. You know what I'm saying? They say every successful black man get a white woman, but yet when you see these dudes, they all got black women. It's only a handful that marry a white woman. Not many. You know what I'm saying? Not how it's portrayed. You know what I'm talking about? But if a black woman marries a man of another race, what they look what they did when Serena married that white boy. They celebrated. Ain't nobody have a problem with it. That's hypocrisy. If you got a problem with it when I do it, then it should be a problem when she do it. But she claimed she was pro-black some years back. You know what I'm saying? But it is what it is, though. You know, niggas think she a man, too, but I never went for that one. Never went for that one. Because I want to know when did these niggas get these trans operation surgeries at these times? You know what I'm saying? And how can somebody go this long fooling people that they're of another sex? You know, eventually that's going to come out. That nigga surgeon is impeccable. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? That's impeccable, but you know what I mean? I mean, but it, it is what it is, but I'm just using that as, as a backdrop because that's what happens. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of foul stuff get promoted and people go along with it. Because when you look at a lot of when you look at a lot of pro homosexual rallies, it's a lot of black women that you don't see no dudes stamping for punks. For, for homosexual rights and don't punk homosexual children and we love our like I said somebody was upset because some little boy killed himself because he was a tranny or a punk he was about 12, 13 years old happened a couple months ago I felt no sadness for him his blood be upon him you want to be 12, 13 years old putting Peters in your mouth then go on ahead and get what y'all got for you straight up though why why should I be sad about that why would I be upset about that and and to notice the thing that why I say that is because most of the women who have a problem with that identify with being believers of the scriptures but they promote ideologies and lifestyles that are contradictory to the man who they say that's just the same stuff when you hear a woman say Jesus is my husband Jesus ain't your husband he don't want you just like no other man out here wants you you know what I'm saying he never said that and no man he probably come down here don't you lie on me ho yeah, he said, don't you lie me, ho. And he said, I wouldn't marry you myself. But you the Lord. Yeah, I got sense too, though. They stamped it and promoted it. Nigga, big old cross dresser. You know what I'm saying? Because they don't care. And who were and who was the main people pushing for you to go see a big six foot five, 250 pound nigga in a dress? Black women. You know what I'm saying? And dudes ain't like, oh, I want to go see Medea. He going because his old lady want him to go. And he want to happy ending at the end of the night. He don't want to see this big rusty nigga in no dress. Do you know what I'm talking about? But, yeah, you, you think you think Tyler Perry would have got that big without a black woman? Absolutely not. All his movies are made to cater to black women, if you pay attention. Every last one of them. And he make the man look weak and he uplifts them. Yeah, I pay attention to that type of stuff. And women eat it up and love it, too. Cause it boosts their ego, then they come home in the streets with that, and then they be shocked when a nigga like baby, this ain't uh whatever the name one of that nigga movies is. You know what I'm saying? This real life, baby. You can go home by yourself. We don't live like that over here. Yeah, and, and, and guess what? That's how the righteous feel. I'm gonna do bad all by myself. I'm gonna badly get away from you. Revelation 19, man. Verse 15. And when the morning arose, then the Malachim hastened Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters, which are here, lest you be consumed in the iniquity of the city. Remember, he told you what? The end from the beginning and the beginning from the end. Ain't nothing going down that ain't, ain't already went down. So before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, he told the righteous to do what? Get out. 
And before he destroyed Babylon, what are you going to tell the righteous to do? Get out. And while he lingered, the men laid hold upon his hand and upon the hand of his wife and upon the hand of his two daughters, Yahuwah being, Yahuwah being merciful unto him, they brought him forth and set him without the city. And it came to pass when they brought him forth abroad that he said, escape for your life. Look not behind you, neither stay you in the plain, but escape to the mountain, lest you be consumed. See, that's what a lot of people going to happen to him with Babylon, too, except they're not going to be consumed like Lot's wife was consumed. They're going to be consumed because they're going to stay. They're like, it's not that bad here. You know, you know what I'm saying? We got cucumbers, leeks, and melons. I'm not going anywhere. Come over here to Book of Luke. I want to say 19 chapter. Hey, little buddy. Hey, little buddy. Yes, ma'am. Make sure that's what I want. And it is not. Might be Luke 18. It's Luke 17. My apologies. Luke 17, and I'll say uh, 25. Well, 24, Luke 17 and 24. It says, for as the lightning that lighten out of one part under heaven shine unto the other part under heaven, so shall the son, so shall also the son of man be in his day. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the son of man. What happened in the days of Noah? That, that too, but you know what also was in the way of Noah? That we always like to sit back and, and we might overlook. Number one, said they corrupted the way of Yahuwah upon the whole earth. So that means that they were extremely, not only did you sit back looking at, and see this is what again, because what did we read in Isaiah 24 last night? It said that they have broken the everlasting covenant. So the key point that what you see is not just that these people are wicked, but the way of Yahuwah is being utterly corrupted. For the way of you who would be utterly corrupted, that means the individual cognizant and aware of what the way of you who is to corrupt it. You can't corrupt something you don't know about. So that means the same way in Babylon. What is the beast doing? He's doing what? He's corrupting the way of you. So I got to wipe that out. This the next thing you say. They did eat. They drank. They married wives. They were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. See, that go back to what we didn't discuss before. There ain't no Max Thunderdome syndrome like everybody thinking, you know, you're going to survive. There's not going to be any food. No, you're going to be living your life, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been living it just under very, very harsh oppression. You know what I'm saying? You know, a lot of brews always say that what you're going to do when the food runs out. Did you whoever tell you the food will run out? If there was a famine, it's because you who are going to create that famine, not because man did it. You know what I'm saying? And, there, and, he, and and if you believe what he said in the book, he said, I ain't never seen the righteous forsaken or begging for bread. So the famine wouldn't wouldn't touch the righteous. Was Jacob them begging for food in the famine in a time? No, they was not. Was Abraham begging for food in the famine? No, they was not. So when you hear a nigga say that, he don't believe in you. Like a nigga say, I got food stored up like you couldn't send some locusts or some lice. Or, or, or a canker worm or whatever he wanted to destroy your crop. Silly Nick. Because you trust him. He'll show you too. Oh, oh, so you think you're straight. Go ahead and destroy that crop for him, man. Let me see what they do then. And most of them going to do just like this. Nine times out of ten, the adversary might be standing next to you and be like, this. hey, man, touch all their crops. I bet they curse you to your face. And some niggas going to prove that wicked bastard right to them. You who I hate you. Now I ain't got no fruit. Now I got to go get this mark. I hate you. Yeah, play thank us again. It's gonna be somebody who do it. Unfortunately. He said, likewise, also as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they bought, they sold, they planted, they built it. But the same day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from Shamahim and destroyed them all. Even thus shall it be in the day when the Son of Man is revealed. And that day he would he would shall be upon the housetop and his stuff in the house. Let him not come down to take it away. Let him that's in the field, let him likewise not return back. Remember Lot's wife. Same thing until you get out of Babylon. Hit it. Don't get caught up in their sins when it's time. Because when Babylon get hit, he's coming right behind that. He's coming right behind that. And people going to get caught slacking. Back to Zephaniah chapter 3. 
I'm telling you, man, it's nothing different. Don't let these people come up with all these extreme scenarios of how it's going to be in the end. It's nothing different. It's going to be just like he did before. It's going to be like it was when you left out of Egypt. It's going to be like it was when you uh with, with, with Sodom and Gomorrah. It's nothing different. He's not doing anything different. So when you know when it happens, you know that this is a true and living God. This is Yahuwah doing this. There would be no mistaking. You won't have to wonder or ponder. Is it really of Yah or is it just by happenstance? You ain't going to have to wonder. You already know what he's about and what he's done. You know his handiwork. Back to Zephaniah chapter 4. I know I've mentioned Revelation 8, but let me read this Zephaniah 3 and 8 and 9, and then we'll go back to Revelation 8. He says, therefore, wait you upon me, saith Yahuwah, until the day that I rise up to the prey. For my determination is to gather the nations, that I may assemble the kingdoms, to pour upon them my indignation, even all my fierce anger, for all the earth shall be devoured with the fire of my jealousy. Now, that go back to what we read by the Revelation 16, where he said he was going to gather everybody up at. Valley of decision in the Hebrew tongue called Armageddon or the Valley of Jehoshaphat. Or just he mentioned it's three, whatever you want to call it. It's one out of three. He said this is what his determination is. This is what his point is. Then it says, for then will I turn the people a language that they may call upon the name of you who would serve him with one consent. So that means that that what happened at the Tower of Babel will not be recreated until there's actually been a tower built to heaven where you can have a name and a place with him. That's not happening now because he said before he did that, he got to kill everybody first. You know what I'm saying? And I got to torment them because they won't they won't repent. They won't listen to me. Come on back to Revelation 8. Let's just look at a couple of these things. Revelation 8, man. 8 and 1. See, but that's how people just take a script. Hold on. Oh, yeah. I mean, but that's that's one West teaching. Savon didn't say he got a brother who he know who in GMS who swears up and down that the, the nations being at war or World War Three will end with the missiles. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's one West. That's what they're taught. So they just regurgitating what they have been taught. He know just like I know if you run up in IUIC, they actually have a precept book that they study, that they're able that they that they memorize and recite back they don't really know how to go past outside the concepts of what they've been taught so when you go to coming at them saying well no nah, bro boom 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 they don't want to hear that oh that brother reprobate that's their favorite line to call people is rep you telling somebody but that just means to be worthless you know what i'm saying but true story you have not told a lot but but you know what does the script say make you reprobate It's two places that tell you about reprobate. Romans chapter 1, Jeremiah chapter 6. Indeed, indeed, because that's the most people read. In Romans 1, and about 28, he tell you because you don't like to retain Elohim in your knowledge. He said, I'll give you over to a reprobate mind and do those things which are not convenient. He, he definitely was. He definitely was. He definitely was. Before he got to mentioning what makes you be reprobate, he was talking about punks and lesbians. Now, in Romans. In Jeremiah 6, he said you reprobate. He said reprobate silver because Yahuwah has rejected you. You know what I'm saying? See, when you become reprobate, Yahuwah has rejected you because you're no worth to him. And you can never be worth to him being just a mindless sinner. But the key thing, what you what he mentioned, right? You don't like to keep him in your knowledge. So you operate off your own wisdom and your own understanding. And that's why you see a lot of brothers who be in the word and they participate in the things that they participate in. They always commit adultery. They always being malicious. They always breaking covenants. They always fornicate. They homosexuals. They like to debate the strife, all of that, because all of those things are contained in one thing. And that is confusion. You know what I'm saying? Like I mentioned to y'all the other day, man, that brother said some real talk now. He say some crazy stuff, but he say some real stuff probably about 65% of the time. You know what I'm talking about? Because he be on some other type of time on, depending on what the topic is. Depends on what the topic is. But that man say, if you ain't trying to solve your problems, you're just an agent of chaos. And the average person is an agent of chaos. 
If you don't like to solve your problems, you just like the confusion and the disorder that comes from the problems. You know what I'm saying? This is why people love Satan. This is why people are pro-science and pro-atheist, because that doesn't solve the problem. That's why people like false prophets. That's why Yahuwah said, you know, speak unto us smooth things, not right things. Tell us deceits, because people like those lies because it keeps them in the dysfunction of that they've been accustomed to. Do you know what I'm saying? When you come to when you come to Yahuwah and Yahuwah, you, this is what you got to do and this is how you got to live. Guess what has to, what disappears? Confusion, disorder, dysfunction. Problems are solved. That brings peace. Well, the average person doesn't know peace, don't want peace, ain't seen peace. They just like to use the buzz terms that people use in these days and times. Be his peace. Well, baby, you can't be nobody peace if you ain't at peace with you and vice versa. People wonder why they ain't got no peace because the confusion and disorder of the adversary still rests within you. You know what I'm saying? And, and it is what it is. It's no, it's you know, the number one way to eliminate it is to trust in Yahuwah and his way. Then he'll he'll take you through the pathway of relieving that confusion. That's like I told you before, like you know, it's a real big thing now, 2019. Oh, yeah, mental health, mental health, and mental health is important. But then you have to take in if these people are promoting it in a heavy fashion, that means you need to be very discriminatory on who you sit down with and have those conversations with. You know what I'm saying? That work in those fields. That doesn't mean that every psychotherapist is an agent of chaos, but there's a reason why they pushing it and promoting it in that fashion in this day and time. You know what I'm saying? It's not by accident. What I'm talking about on a mass scale, because we could go back three, four years ago, that was not a conversation. You know what I'm saying? Now it is a massive conversation. So you have to look at, and nine times out of ten, I think for some of them, they trying to get people to go so they can put them on psychotropic meds. You know what I'm talking about? I'm not saying though. You have to. All I'm saying is to be discriminatory. It doesn't mean that every psychotherapist is gonna say you want some Zoloft. You know what I'm saying? You want some of this? You want some of that? Because you know what happens when I get you drugged up and doped up? You're easily controlled. True story. Yeah, I know it's a different because I definitely knew somebody who went to see a therapist and they definitely shot us some Zoloft. That's they fit. That's they think fair cuz Madison. Get you some Madison. You want some Tussin? You know what I'm saying? That Tussin gonna have y'all here like, like this here. Just be sitting in the house like this here. What's going on? That's gonna mess you up. Cause because my homegirl said she stopped taking that zone off because she said she couldn't function. She said she was actually worse when she was on it than when she didn't take it. And she eventually beat her depression without it. You know what I'm saying? But she said it definitely prolonged it. And that stuff, and they put you on that stuff because that's some of the stuff they use to trigger you to make you a, a, a sleeper killer. You know what I'm saying? No, I'm dead serious though. When you look at a lot of people who pull, and the only reason I mentioned that because they just said it was a shooting and uh in El Paso, when you go look at most of the people who do the mass shootings, they usually always be on the psych med. That's why I told you that Nipsey Hussle shooter definitely was supposed to be on some psych meds. And where did they pick him up at? At the psych hospital. Ain't nobody killing him and go to no psych hospital unless he was programmed to take a stupid behind round now. Always got a mental health issue. You know why you can do that? Because if I get you in the crazy house, I can do whatever I want to with you. Who gonna know? I can electroshock therapy you. I can do, I can waterboard you. Ain't nobody gonna know. You know what I'm saying? See y'all here, they think you're a regular nigga. Next thing you know, you done shot 10, 15 people up, and then you looking around like, what's happening? Why am I here? Why are guns in my face? Like, we done discussed that before. You wonder why they don't ever shoot the mass killers? Because he's been programmed, nigga, that's why. They always shoot the black people. They don't never shoot the mass killers, because we got to deprogram this nigga. Send him off to jail. Who gonna believe him? Nigga, you ain't nobody. Shoot, you work dead more than alive. You work more money dead than alive anyway. Get you out of here. Collect the insurance money. 
You know what I'm saying? That's the reality of the system you live in. But it is what it is. Don't it all. You put that put him in a movie. <laughs> he wanna laugh. <laughs> he wanna laugh. He's trying to hold himself. Yeah, I see it in your face. You want to laugh, don't you? He want to laugh, but he can't do nothing about it. Revelation 8 and 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half an hour. I saw the seven Malachim who stood before Elohim, and to them were given seven trumpets. Another Malachim stood at the altar, having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar, which is before the throne. He spoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints and sent it up before Elohim out of the Malachim's hand. The Malachim took the censer and filled it with the fire of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. The seven Malachim, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound. The first Malachim sounded, and there followed hail and fire mingled with blood. And they were cast upon the earth, and a third part of the trees were burnt up, and all the green grass was burnt up. That's right. What ain't that's what he did in Egypt? Drop some hail. He ain't dropped no blood with it though. And all this is to kill the vegetation. Now he killed all the uh, what it was, all the cattle in Egypt and the crop, doing the same thing all over again. He said the second Malachi sounded it was a great mountain burning with fire cast in the sea, and the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea had life and died, and the third part of the ships was destroyed. And the third Malachi sounded, and there fell a great star from Shamahim, burning as it were a lamp, and it fell upon the third part of the rivers and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the stars called Wormwood, the third part of the waters became Wormwood. Many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. The fourth Malachim sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars, so that the third part of them was darkened, and the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise. So he just gave them like this here, just give them the pure. And you know that's probably going to make them extra sad when the sun don't shine, because now they can't worship their God. You know what I'm saying? They just going stone cold crazy. And of course, the rest of them, he's going to call scorpions to come out to earth and he's going to tell them to kill and harm anybody who don't have the Ruach HaKadosh. That's why people realize that's why if you're alive in that time, you better have the Ruach because if you don't, you're subject to being destroyed. Remember what he said in the book of Ezekiel. He said, don't touch any man that has the mark. Anybody else who don't have the mark, he said, kill him. Because remember, the Ruach HaKadosh is a sign that you are in covenant with Yahuwah. The Ruach is a sign of the new covenant. So without it, all he sees is someone who has not said everything in this word we will do. Ha <laughs> ha! Didn't go how you thought it would. And you want some sympathy. Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah 51 and 1, because we got to get it into Jeremiah 51 this day. We're already about an hour in. Yeah, if you have the mark of the beast, then you don't have the Ruach HaKadosh. If you have the mark of Allah, then you, you possess it. No, he no, he asked the question. No, he asked me. He, he asked me. No, no. no. So, you know, you ain't got that mark. And again, that also, but it there it says sealed, but it's also going to be marked. You know what I'm saying? You need to be sealed with the, the Ruach of promise. Now, that truck ain't no game. That's why I told you, man, what we read last night, too. But if they ain't talking about unity in the faith and the knowledge of Son of Elohim to a perfect man and to the fullness of the stature, they ain't going to do nothing but get you killed when the plagues start coming. You being an Israelite ain't going to spare you for them plagues, man. Don't let the people lie to you. I'm an Israelite. Them scorpions ain't going to get me. That scorpion got you, nigga. I can drink this bitter water. See? No plague will touch me. I can't breathe. Like you already in touch, right? Yeah. You use the trying to justify like why you gonna be straight You ain't gonna be straight. It's gonna be just like what I told y'all that CEO said to me when I was out. Uh, Welcome to hell, because that's what you're gonna get ready to experience. All righty then, sir. I'll give you a pass at this time. 
show me a child. <laughs> he, sound, he sound like he was ready to repeat that. <laughs> you didn't do it? Oh, so you're happy now. Are you always happy? You're a happy boy. I can concur with that statement. The only time you're not happy is when you have to go to bed. Yeah, then you're not happy. You happy too? No, you're not happy too. You just want to join in. Right now you're sad because your mother popped you. But we appreciate you joining. T tuck your lip in. Tuck your lip in. Tuck your lip in. Nobody's leaving Sai out. Don't feel like you're being left out because you're not left out. But you don't have to join in on everything. We know you're here, Sai. We see you. Do you see you? We see you. Tuck your lip in, though. Tuck your lip in. Keep poking your lip out like that. It's going to stay like that. And then you're going to trip over it when you walk. Jeremiah 51 and 1. Thus saith Yahuwah, behold, I will raise up against Babylon and against them that dwell in the midst of them that rise up against me, a destroying wind. Now, we just talked about that. He said he'll raise up a destroying wind. Who can answer that question with scripture? What is he talking about when he says he'll raise up a destroying wind? We just went over it a few weeks ago. No, no, no. I don't know if I use Isaiah 66, but you would be correct. I didn't use that, but you would be correct. Isaiah 66. Isaiah 66 and verse 15. For behold, Yahuwah will come with fire and with chariots like a whirlwind to render his anger with fury and his rebukes with flame of fire. For by fire and by his sword will he plead, will Yahuwah plead with all flesh and the slain of Yahuwah shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh and the abomination in the mouse shall be consumed together, saith Yahuwah. For I know their works and their thoughts, and it shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, and they shall see my esteem. But the place that I was referring to that we just recently went over was in the book of Nahum. They say you who are making way in the clouds and that he's angry and he's furious. Also, what we read in the 23rd chapter of the book of Jeremiah, that he said you who will come in the world with it. He will execute his fierce wrath. And in the latter days, you will understand it perfectly. So when he's telling you that he's coming in a destroying wind, you can come back to the book of Jeremiah 51. But good choice, by the way. That wasn't the one, but it works because it's still going into the framework. Go ahead, sir. I don't know if we did this one. I had I think Zachariah 7 works. So what verse you got? Zechariah 7 and 14. I believe that will work because the verbiage is coming to my mind at this time. Zechariah chapter 12, right? We pick it up at verse 8. It's still worth what we're dealing with. Now he's talking about Yasharal specifically, but people, period, who have hearts of stone. Hearts of stone. Don't like to listen. And the word of Yahuwah came unto Zechariah saying, thus speak Yahuwah of hosts. Listen to what he tell you. Execute true what? Judgment. Now, again, in order to execute true judgment, what is the one thing that must be removed? Your emotions, your feelings. You cannot execute true judgment off of emotions and feelings because Yahuwah is a Ruach. He is not a man. He's an Elohim of judgment. Remember, that's just mishpah. That's just knowing what is right and wrong. Not right and wrong to you. Not right and wrong to me. That's why I would tell you. And I've seen Carmelo Anthony in his interview yesterday kept saying that over and over again. That's why that is dangerous of what that new statement that people come out with. My truth. Well, who cares about your truth? Because it's only about you who is true. Huh? Oh, several times. Several times. I've only sent bits and pieces of the interview because he was on there for the first hour, first take. You know what I'm saying? But he said I had to come on here and speak my truth. A lot of people were saying things about me 
I just need to speak my truth. <laughs> but I'm gonna be honest with you though. That nigga would be in he was, niggas entertainer, niggas is actors, but I believe that nigga would be insincere what he would talk about. I said I was very humble. You know, niggas say he say, Man, I know that there's 30 teams, there's 15 niggas on the team. I know I can get on there. He said, Well, you know that, that it was supposed to be you, LeBron, and D Wade. He said it was. He said, but I was immature and stupid. I didn't know the business. You know what I'm saying? They told me not to sign a five-year deal for 80 million. I think say, but there's no way in hell I'm leaving 32 million dollars on the table. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> how that nigga said it, how he was looking. Oh, he was dead serious. He said they told me to sign a three-year deal. They told me to. He said, but nah. I can't leave him. He said, I'm from the hood, nigga. I'm poor. <laughs> the nigga said that's what he said, though. In my life, that's what he said, though. That's what he said, though. He said, I couldn't do it. He said, I didn't have the mind frame and the wherewithal to see that far down the line. Yeah, he said, LeBron told him, nigga, to sign a three year deal, nigga. We come down there to Miami and play. He said, Boy, I was too immature, nigga. Let me say 32 million. They said, Don't sign that five year 80 million. Oh, yeah, because he was saying, you know, I need my money. They my money. He said, man, he said that cracker came and told him. He said, Daryl Moore came and told me your services are no longer needed. <laughs> <I> said, <"God." laughs> that's what he said. <laughs> that nigga said that nigga, you could tell when that nigga was talking, that nigga felt like a nigga took his nuts and put it in a purse. <laughs> <laughs> nah, he ain't getting no more money. No, nah, he might still be getting some money because well, now ain't nobody take a contract over. He still get money from what the Knicks gave him. Because he never got bought out. They traded him. See what I'm saying? And then the Rockets signed him to a deal. So it was only a one year deal. So he still get that money. You know, NBA players get played regardless. No matter what happens. That's why NBA players don't get cut. You know what I'm saying? Because if once you sign a deal, it doesn't matter. You got to pay me. It's fully guaranteed. That's why baseball players don't get cut. Because you got to pay me regardless. NFL players, not so much. <laughs> now I think his deal with the Knicks might be over, cause they was like you left, you you, you stayed, you you went, you were chasing the money. And the Knicks say no, nah, no, nah, I was set to go to the Bulls, my nigga, I was set to go. He say, but they went to talk about stuff behind the scenes, so I went and got my money. <laughs> I say, boy, and they done got more than that, cause you know Melo like to walk around with that seven around his neck, and I done told y'all what that seven around his neck about. Y'all ever seen Melo with that seven chain on? Yeah, that's 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 uh, that's that's that God body stuff, man. That's that nations of gods on the earth. That's that peace God. He already let you know what type of time he on. Some other type of time. He probably been on that because he's from Baltimore, New York. And the niggas heavy there, so he probably been on that his whole life. Jay Z like to walk around with that chain on. You know what I'm saying? But I know the average person when they see that chain, they don't know what that logo is and who that's about. But I done told y'all about that before. That's Clarence 13X. He split off from the Nation of Islam because Farad Muhammad was a white man. And he said, how can the black man be God, uh, Elijah Muhammad, and the man who taught you white as snow? He had a problem with that. And they killed him not even 10 years after him breaking off. You know what I'm saying? Well, what made me want to find out about it as a jit was listening to Wu Tang and like, what is these niggas talking about? And my big homie was on that because he was from up there. You know what I'm saying? So he was like, yeah, this is what this is. This is what this is. And when I got to prison, I found out it completely the whole thing was Nation of Islam teaches for the most part. What's the mathematics, God? Because every number has a meaning and every letter in the alphabet has a meaning. So when the date come up, you're supposed to decipher all this stuff and then go study that for the day. And he's like, you still, uh, oh, yeah, all the niggas do. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that's what that junk be. I can't even remember. I had the whole alphabet and all that junk out the road, man. But I threw that junk in the trash. All that. Like, I'm just new to this stuff. Talking about it's Mercury retrograde. This is influencing your life. Man, you who ain't never told you nothing about no moon and no water influencing your life. See, that's what that is. Your heart, heart and stone. You's a wicked bastard. You can't execute true judgment because you're stupid. This is what he said, though. He say, show mercy and compassion every man to his brother. Oppress not the widow, nor the fatherless, nor the, or the stranger, nor the poor. And let none of you imagine evil against your brother in your heart. But they refuse to hearken. 
and pulled away the shoulder and stopped the ear that they should not hear. These are not even hard requests. Yet they made their hearts stone as an adamant stone, lest they should hear the Torah and the words which Yahuwah of hosts have sent in his Ruach by the former prophets came great wrath from Yahuwah of hosts. Therefore, it has come to pass that as he cried that they would not hear, so they cried, and I would not hear, say of Yahuwah of hosts. But I scattered them with a whirlwind. See, that's a little different. That's him saying, I'm, I'm scattering you to the four corners of the earth. You know what I'm saying? But it still is, is relevant because you I'm doing this to you because you don't listen. You know what I'm saying? You hear the word and they don't listen. Like you're right. It's it's a lot. It's people I know who say they believe in you. Who are talking about some Mercury retrograde? How dumb are you? Do you know who Mercury is, nigga? That nigga say some trash. <laughs> they say you've been smoking that Mercury retrograde. Jeremiah 51, man. Niggas say that sound like some bad weed. It is some bad weed. It's definitely some bad work. Yep, you right, Mar. Yep. Okay, then. Jeremiah 51 and 2. He said, And I will send unto Babylon fanners that shall fan her and shall empty her land. For in the day of trouble, they shall be against her round about. Against him that bend, bend, let the archer bend his bow. Against him that lift himself up in his brigadine. Now that's talking about an army. Spare you not her young men. Destroy you utterly all her hosts. Thus shall the slain fall in the land of the Chaldeans and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Yasharal have not been forsaken. Nor Yehuda of his Elohim. Yehuda of hosts. Though their land was filled with sin against the Kadash one of Yasharal, which we basically just seen in Zechariah 7. The land was full of it. And again, that goes back to that conversation, how we like to romanticize how righteous of a people we were. But this book just said that the land was full of sin. Now, y'all already know that. What did, what did it? King Josiah had to get the male temple prostitutes out the land. Now, think about that, bro. Because we're just talking about because of Sukkot Beno. This is supposed to be a righteous people. And you got a you got a homosexual harlotry house and a heterosexual harlotry house and then a pansexual harlotry house in the same land. And it's the land of Yahuwah and all y'all his people in covenant with him. And you going in and out. You know what I'm saying? That's before you talk about anything else. Then ain't even just about it. You got three different types of whole houses for whatever your sexual perversions are. And this man, Josiah, as a young child, had to come through and destroy them. You around here hanging out at the Asherah pole. You know what I'm saying? And I just looked at something a little earlier. How many of y'all familiar with the word thug and where it come from? The word thug. Thug. You know, a lot of niggas say they want to be thugs. You know, I know are y'all familiar also like with the word assassin, where that assassin where that come from? Assassin does. Thug does not. Assassin comes from they they from the word hashish. You know what I'm saying? They used to smoke a lot of hashish before they went and killed each other. And that's the root word for, for the word assassin. Yeah, I, I read that up the road. Yeah, assassin is root is root is in the word hashish because they used to like to smoke hashish before they, they killed people. Yeah, that's what hash is. That's the complete word of hash is hashish. I think that's like you smoke hash. Nisha, you was around here smoking hash? Uh, yeah, that means you was. <laughs> Dang, I forgot what I was. Oh, that's what it was. I done smoked hash before. Dolo, with my weed, all that. It ain't nothing but the male version of the plant. That's all hash he says is the male version of the plant. It smoke all the same. It do. It's a little bump, bump up, you know. Say, hey, man, stronger. That's how it goes. <laughs> I know I ain't the only thing get here. Smoke some hash. You know, smoke some hash. Sprinkle a little bit. Sprinkle a little bit. Smoke some opium. I didn't either. What? You think a hair with you? No, I'm just messing. No, I, no, I just said that because I. 
I used to kick it with a nigga from Tennessee, and he used to break up opium on his weed. And that nigga like, you want to smoke some man? You want to smoke opium man? I'm like, no. That nigga literally talked like how, uh, what that nigga name is? How he talked. That nigga literally, that nigga was from Memphis. That nigga literally sounded like him. But here you go right here, y'all. Thugs or thuggies were history's most notorious and deadly criminal cult. The name thug, thuggy, or tuggy is derived from the Sanskrit stock or poly, poly talk. This means to hide or conceal, mainly a secret concealment. Thugs were Hindu and Muslim Indians whose thuggy cult was based on the worship of the goddess Kali. Kali is the destructive and creator mother goddess in the Hindu religion. Kali is the fierce aspect of Devi, the supreme goddess, who is fundamental to all Hindu deities. The ongoing work of creation is described by believers as the play of Kali. Kali is believed to be the destroyer of evil spirits and the preserver of devotees. She is close to Shiva and her name derives from Kala, from the Sanskrit words for darker time, Kala also means black female, as opposed to her consort, Shiva, who is white. Kali is often portrayed standing on the inert form of her consort, Shiva. She is in sometimes in the company of she demons. Her eight arms hold weapons and, sir, and, and or the severed head of a demon. These objects held by Kali symbolize both her creative and destructive power. Kali demonstrates the ambivalence of deity, which, according to the Hindu tradition, manifests itself in the unending cycle of life, death, creation, and destruction. Thugs will also wear organized hereditary cult that practice large-scale robbery and murder and justified by their belief in serving Kali. Membership induction was often passed from father to son, with the women of the home being kept unaware of the men's cult activity. Sounds like niggas in the street. <laughs> this is what it says now. It says as well as being a well-organized group of professional murderers or assassins, they went through Indian gangs of 10 to 200, all dressed in various guises. They targeted travelers, usually wealthy travelers, and they just plundered. And they considered it a religious duty to commit murder and robbery. And they consider themselves to be holy and honorable men. Such, such, behave, such abhorrent behavior did not affect their moral feelings. They followed the instructions and will of their goddess through the interpretation of a very complica complicated system of omens. And guess what? A lot of thugs in the street, how they feel? Ain't nothing wrong with me killing and robbing. And, and, and the brother mentioned one person in regard to that. And who was the biggest purveyor of being a thug? But old Leslie. Y'all know Leslie, don't you? Y'all don't know Leslie? You know Leslie. You just know him by another name. You know Leslie by the name of Tupac Amaro Shakur. That's who you know. That's his real name. His name Leslie. Yeah, Tupac's not his real name. Tupac is the name of a, 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 a cult in South America. That name means Shining Serpent. That nigga named Leslie Shanes, if I'm not mistaken. And they ain't even confident that that's his name. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, that ain't his real name. Tupac and Marshall Court definitely is not his real name. I remember when I first read about that cult in the newspaper. I'm like, dang, I thought that. No, nah, man. That nigga named Shining Devil. That's that nigga's name. That's what his name means. And then he and he promoted a thug culture of murder and robbery, robbing because why? Because you know they 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 been array Kali Ma. You got to kill for Kali Ma. She's a destructive goddess. You know what I'm saying? Just show you how that type of culture is always pushed, and you just thinking that stuff come out. Of, most of us ain't gonna sit back and take the time to where does thug come from? You just think that's a word they made up. Old time these niggas was robbing and killing people in ancient time for a bald headed hoe with eight arms and severed heads. You know what I'm saying? And when you look at the beast, the beast is actually operating in the same fashion as a thug would in service to Kali Ma because he's with murdering and robbery and using deceit and not feeling bad about his dishonorable deeds as he's committing them. Because most of us know somebody who a thug who do evil stuff and they don't feel bad about nothing they doing. And guess what a whole bunch of young kids want to grow up, especially during my time, niggas want to grow up and be thugs. The softest drugs throw cotton. One going to do nothing to nobody. But you want to be a thug and go murder and rob. 
And like we were talking about earlier, that's how a nigga end up with 55 years. You think that little jit y'all were talking about rapping? You think you think if that type of stuff wouldn't be being admitted in the airways that he would have been stupid enough to go do something to get him 55 years? Who want to go do 55 years with a bunch of men? Yeah, they always think they're going to get off. Then they find out. Mr. Charlie got somewhere to put you. <laughs> he got somewhere to put you. Well, it don't make no difference. He got 55 years. It's over with. I have no idea. Look at that. That's your favorite. That was your favorite MC one. I think that. That nigga cheesing with it too, Tay K. Nigga, you don't know about that music? That nigga Tay K, nigga. That nigga rap, nigga. And he got another nigga kill. <laughs> Good messing with you, man. All them niggas stupid. Oh, Takashi says now that might have been a plan. That might have been a plan. No, I'm just saying he might have been a plan just in the regards of just in the regards of how that stuff goes. The reason why that joint sound far fetched because you think this stuff real, but the CIA and the feds do plant people and criminal organizations for the purpose to play a role to take it down. They did it with that 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 nasty bastard Yahweh been Yahweh. The nigga who took him down, he was a plan. They put him there. And he took him down. Oh, the nigga who I'm talking about? Shoot, the nigga uh, Carl that I know? No, not Carl. I ain't gonna say Carl. Carl had a nigga on his show. But my nigga Michael Edwards, though? Man, shoot, YouTube took that nigga channel down for how hard he was going on this nigga. That nigga tell you, yeah, I told him Yahweh been Yahweh. Yeah, the feds signed me. Yeah, they paid me. Like, yeah, that nigga was like, this true story. Like, that nigga testified against me. Get a nigga. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's not really that hard. It's not hard at all. Yeah, you just play the role. You just play the role. Well, who? Oh yeah, they did that with a the black. They sent that they sent many. That was what Cointel Pro was all about: to send individuals and black organizations to infiltrate and destroy it for the end. Like no, the flaws in the system beat is that you peep that this nigga's an agent. No, no, that's what I was looking at. Like standpoint, that's what I was Oh no! I mean, even now you can still. The reason being why the, the part that we don't realize is, is that only on TV they be like, "You can't kill people. You're a police officer. Shoot, you could kill them niggas. Smoke crack, sell crack. Them crack don't care. Just take this nigga down." Yeah, yeah, I was just saying like, I'm saying like, nigga try to send an agent. No, because they gonna they gonna train a nigga on what you own. Because they, before they send the agent, they've already did a psychological profile on anybody who's involved. Indeed. But even but but even with the but even with the word, like you know, Paul may mention, yeah, we got false brethren, but it ain't nothing that you could do about it. So if they're there, they're there for a purpose. But most people may not, it all depends on the interaction that you're gonna have with people. Some people have organizations. Organization so big that they don't pay attention to everybody. You know what I'm saying? So that allows an individual to deceive and walk up through the ranks. And by the time they get up to the people who are in charge, they might actually believe that this is a, a loyal, serious individual. Sometimes CIA don't got to Who already there? Who's disgruntled? Yeah, they they definitely do that. I mean, they do a little bit of both. You know what I'm saying? It don't always necessarily just be a random nigga off the street, but we didn't already talk about that before. You can't take somebody down from a distance. You have to be close. You know what I'm saying? Not, nothing in the history of civilization, civilization has ever crumbled without somebody being close. Y'all remember the story of uh, 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 Caesar and Brutus? You know what I'm talking about? Who got Julius Caesar killed? It was Brutus. And when Brutus stabbed him, he said, you too, Brutus? Never would have thought. You two, Brutus. Who could? Nobody could have got the Lord. Who had to get it? Nigga sitting right there with it. You thought one of the scribes? Of, but I mean, but regardless, of, he knew because he knew the script. But everybody sitting around him didn't know. Because when he said something to him about it, is it me? Is it me? What is he talking about? 
But it, it's the point of that there would have been no way for him to be taken and killed unless it was somebody close to him. How would they be able to have the access to get it? They wouldn't have had the same token when it's Samson. When they came and got Samson, they were people close to him. Philistines weren't going to be able to come get him because you're not going to let your defenses down for an enemy. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be on guard. Hold on, nigga. But if it's somebody you consider to be a, a compatriot, then you're not as apprehensive. You know what I'm talking about? And that's that's why it has to be somebody close to take you down. It can never be somebody from the outside because they would never know your mind frame and your inner workings and your schedule and all that. Cause what did you to say? I know where they hang at. In what regard? No, I'm just saying that if, if it's a person in the history of mankind, if somebody gets taken down, it's going to be from someone close enough to them to do so. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to happen from an outsider. You know what I'm saying? Because they, they, they're not going to have the access. So that's why the feds would always try to find members of organizations that were disgruntled. You know what I'm saying? And manipulate them because they're being emotional to use them to destroy a nigga. Because the nigga who took down Yahweh Ben Yahweh, he wasn't an outside nigga. He was part of the organization, but he was disgruntled. You know what I'm saying? So nigga took him down. I'm like, shoot, I'm going to tell on this nigga. I'm going to drop a dime on this nigga. Eating a banana. You know what I'm saying? That John crazy though. But Yahweh Ben Yahweh should have been taken down. Because he was an evil bastard. Like that nigga was literally worth a quarter billion dollars. Yeah, in the 80s. I think it was worth a quarter billion dollars. That man had grocery stores and laundry mats and all manner of things all through Miami. I think it was that nigga had a quarter billion dollars. That nigga had jail on lock too. Yeah. Oh pfft. dudes were shocked when I told him you ain't get on the word in prison. I'm like, no, nah, because niggas was like, it's niggas on the yard that bow down and worship to pictures of Yahweh being Yahweh to this day. Oh, he deep in prison system. It's considered, it's considered to be a game. Yeah, they consider it to be, they may not anymore, but at one time, it was considered that if you say you was a see now they don't call it Yahweh Ben Yahweh they call it Y by Y because it's sun guy <laughs> drugs robbing murder everything that's what he was doing he said he was the son of God and it was just crazy no but it's crazy to me because of his name Yahweh son of Yahweh sir you are a certified idiot how are you the son of yourself Explain it to me, sir. But you know that nigga was a, a 33rd degree master mason and probably higher than that. Because we had, my homeboy had some of his literature and when you read it, if you ever read anything on masonry, you see it. He lead off on the grand master builder of the Celestial Lodge. I say, yo, you know this nigga mason, right? Celestial Lodge, nigga? But you always have to look at that when you see, quote unquote, religious leaders write their own books as their interpretation of the text. You have to we have to, you have to examine that. Because Noble Drew Ali did the same thing. I don't know if y'all know who that is. You know who Noble Drew Ali is? Noble Drew Ali started the uh the uh, a different branch of the Moors. So when you see a seven with a circle on it, that's whatever the name of that organization is. It escapes my mind at this time. You know what I'm saying? But they walk around with they fez his own, like he wrote his own Quran. I read that too. His Quran probably about 15 pages long. <laughs> no okay. But it's his I have to look, hold on. I because I, I want to name the name of his organization. I can't remember. Give me a second, man. I don't remember. Mari. Your phone has a three dollar bill. Moore Science Temple. That's what I knew that was in my head. Moore Science Temple of America. He started that in 1913. Moore Science Temple. 
Cause the dude I know he's a part he's a part of the more science team. <laughs> Jeremiah 51 and 6. I don't know what happened to you, sir, but clearly it was traumatizing for you. It's okay, brother. Breathe. Breathe. Just breathe. One day you'll learn to obey. Flee out the midst of Babylon. Deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of Yahuwah's vengeance. He will rent his recompense. Now, we read that the other day. You see how that court last night, I should say, you see how that correlates to Lot and Sodom and Gomorrah. Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahuwah's hand that had made all the earth drunken, and the nations are drunken no wine. Therefore, the nations are mad. Who knows how this is going to relate with that cup? Because he said that Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahuwah's hand. That's one of them. Let's take a look. Psalm 75 and Isaiah 51. Grandma, go sit down. Go sit down. Psalm 75 and 5. Make it 4. Matter of fact, we'll just read verse 1 because he's talking about all that. Yeah. 75 and 1. Psalm 75 and 1. Unto you, O Elohim, do we give thanks. Unto you do we give thanks. For that your name is near your wondrous works declare. See, and that goes again talking about, you know, remember when they say wonder, that's something amazing. Or a sign specific. Remember that in Egypt, he said that all those plagues were what? A sign. So that's why we looked at some of those things last night and tonight, because those are signs that this is Yahuwah and that he is the living Elohim and that now he is ready to render vengeance and recompense to his enemies. He said, when I shall receive the congregation, I will judge the uprightly. I will judge uprightly. Notice what he said when he received the who? So instead of congregation, if we look at it in the New Testament, what would it say? Or oh, the body. The body. And he said he's going to judge the body uprightly. The earth and all the inhabitants thereof are dissolved. I bear up the pillars of it, say Lot. What did he say the whole earth going to be? Dissolved. What's going to dissolve something up? None but that fire. I said unto the fools, Deal not foolishly into the wicked. Lift not up your horn. Lift not up your horn on high. Speak not with a stiff neck. Well, what is the beast going to be out there speaking with? A stiff neck. For promotion come neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But Elohim is the judge. He put down one and set up another. So he going to put the beast down. Because you got to remember something. You who will set up the beast. Don't think no different. Who set up Nebuchadnezzar? You know what I'm saying? Who set up uh, Xerxes and Cyrus? Who set up Saul? You know what I'm talking about? Who, what's the other dude's name? His name is running away from my brain at this time. Oh, uh -uh, it's somebody else. I can't recall. It was just in my mind. It just went away. Just that no, no, no. That's not it. Y'all willing it to come back. It'll probably come back at an inopportune time. Nevertheless, he said, for in the hand of Yahuwah, there is a cup and the wine is red and it's full of mixture. And he pour out the same, but the dregs thereof, all the wicked of the earth shall wring them out and drink them. So there's a cup. He said, it's without what? It's full wrath. And he say Babylon been this golden cup because regardless of the cup, see that's the same token. Just because somebody offer you a, a, a glass don't mean you got to drink it. I remember my homeboy say used to get a lot of arguments, and I used to use just use this simple terminology. Just somebody because somebody invites you to a party don't mean you got to go. You know what I'm saying? So you have to see most people. You got to know the difference when somebody's having a conversation. See, you can have a conversation with somebody and you disagree, and it doesn't descend into fool. The only time conversations descend into foolery when you disagree is because one or both parties are being emotional. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with having a disagreement 
and y'all uh, talking about a matter and y'all have different perspectives. If you can't have a conversation with somebody and y'all have different perspectives without spilling over into emotional recklessness, that signs that's just a sign of emotional immaturity. But you also have to know when you're having a conversation with someone who is trying to provoke and elicit an emotional response. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you have some people that their whole objective in starting conversations on topics is to debate and to argue. You have to have the wisdom to know the difference between the two. You know what I'm saying? Like the dudes in the sports group I'm in, yeah, they, they start the conversation to debate a matter, but it's not that serious. It's like, nah, nigga, that nigga LeBron trash. He's not the GOAT Michael Jordan is. It's in fun. Then you have some niggas who come on there, they are really trying to get niggas out of their character. You know what I'm saying? Over something that is inconsequential, such as sports. You know what I'm saying? People get beat up by sports. You know what I mean? But and that's sad. That's sad. You beat the nigga up for somebody who ain't even paying you. Look how sad we get. We won the championship. Well, where my ring at? Because as soon as you send it to me, I'ma hawk it. You ever seen them nigga championship rings? Who? All them diamonds and gemstones and, and platinum and gold you niggas use, as soon as you send it, I'm finna sell it. Some of them rings go for a half a million dollars. I forgot what they said that last uh, Patriots championship ring went for, but it was a large amount of money that it took to make one. Everybody in the organization get one. You know what I'm saying? Everybody get one. From, they might if the owner feel like he want one. You want to get one. But everybody in the in the front office staff, you know what I'm talking about? The players. I'm not sure in the NFL if the uh, practice squad players get one. Matter of fact, yeah, nigga, general manager, all that, scouts, everybody get one. Yeah, everybody get one. You think the G? You think the GM gonna be like, I put the team together? You niggas ain't gonna give me a ring? No, I'm not like general. They might get the people in the office a little bust down. You know yeah, what I'm saying? They, they might not get what the players get. Indeed. But in the NFL, though, nigga, you got to get that to 53 men. When I'm talking about office staff, I'm talking about like management. You know what I'm saying? VP of operations. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, 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 let me clarify that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, yeah, and they expensive. I think that last Patriot ring was almost a million dollars. For the Redskins? For the Mystics? <laughs> oh, the Sharks? Oh, he owes Shark. He got a Shark ring. Sharks don't want by three, four championships. They pass them out. I mean, they probably do that on the NFL, baseball, basketball. They pass them out. You're part of the organization. When they look at it, they want to want to give one to. They feel like everybody in the organization played, which is it's a true story though. Everybody, nobody's position. Some people, it ain't the players, but the players can't be put in a position if the people behind the scenes don't assist the people who pick the players to be able to get them on the field to do what it is that they do, or the people who assist the coaches. You know, it's a whole team effort, so you want to reward the whole team. I mean, at the end of the day, it's just an example of what the word tell you. You know, everybody, it's not, you don't want to look at it as if we're a group of individuals. We're all interdependent parts, all together for one common cause and goal. You know what I'm saying? That's why a lot of things don't get accomplished, whether it be in a familiar setting or with the word or in business, because everybody's not looking at a, it's a group of individuals. That's why a lot of families are dysfunctional in America because it's a group of individuals and it's not a cohesive working towards the vision and goal that the head of that family has set. You know what I'm saying? So then you live in also in a culture and a society that teaches the woman to compete and fight with the man. So there can never be a collective vision for everybody in the household to work towards. So this leads to a lot of chaos. 
You know what I'm saying? And then you have chaotic children who grow up and produce more chaotic children. And then your children have to interact with their children. You know what I'm saying? And that's the part that we don't sit back and consider. You know, your children have to interact with these wicked people's kids. So you might want to prepare them a little bit more ardently than, than, than normal. You know what I'm saying? We're talking about that. Could you imagine giving your child to a old wicked nigga? I'm just talking about what you meant the other day. No, you should marry my son. I shall not. I wish I would. I wish I might. I would rather jump off the top of a diving board into a pool with no water. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> than to pass my child off to your wicked child. Do you know what I'm saying? You got little kids around here emulating wicked bastards and niggas shoot videos of it because they think it's cute. We laugh at it. Look at him. He getting off. One, why is this five-year-old boy listening to grown people music? You know what I'm saying? But all of us was raised like that because all our people had us listening to inappropriate music because they don't look at the difference of, you know what? Maybe my child shouldn't hear this type of verbiage and content. You know what I'm saying? You know why? Because your, your people did it with you. You know what I'm saying? So you thinking, let me share that with him. You know what I'm talking about? Let me share that with her. It's nostalgia. Black people are very emotional and, 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 and like nostalgia. So they like things that uh, because that, that nine times out of ten we usually have a, a, a very negative experience as far as life is concerned. You like to, to reminisce on things that made you feel good. So when you have your own children, you try to want to recreate with them the things that made you feel good because of the environment that we live in in this God forsaken place and how we're treated and usually where we dwell. So, you know, most, you know, here most black people, I can remember my mama playing the records and we would be in the house. We won't turn around and do the same thing. But we already know, because me and my homeboy used to talk about this all the time. Them niggas' music might have been even more perverse in the 50s, 60s, and 70s than it is now. And what do we say there? See, that's that good music. You don't know nothing about that. Them niggas were vile. Very, very vile. You know what I'm saying? When we got older and we really understood what that nigga was singing about, about Mrs. Jones, I'm like, yo, that nigga ought to be shot. Because this nigga was talking about sleeping with another man's wife. Mrs. Jones, me and her got a thing going on. Do you know what I'm saying? Nigga like, what? Now, of course, you know, uh, I, but 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 at the same token, though, those times was, oh, but remember, they witches and warlocks. Push a man. Curtis Mayfield ain't never sold no dope. Yeah, but get, but but guess what though? But then but he would he would pave in the way for niggas like Jeezy to come lie to you talking about 17 5. <laughs> no, not just him, because it's plenty more. It's plenty more. Oh, we already know Leslie was lying. We already talked about Leslie. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about shoot. Let some niggas tell it. Shoot. Let Pimp C tell it. Jesus was a whole actor. Ain't sold a blizzard in a snowstorm. <laughs> niggas said yeah, that's hard to do because they the same. You know what I'm talking about? Let Pimp C to Pimp C say, I know the niggas who was in, in Atlanta with the Timberland boots on with their pants laid rolled up. Talking about they selling squares. Niggas said, You wasn't selling no squares, nigga. The nigga said, Who you talking about? He said, You know who I'm talking about, nigga. I said, My nigga Pimp C was hard, man. He said, That boy wasn't selling no dope. You know what I'm saying? But regardless of what, though, if you look at it, though, I'm your pusher, man. Guess what? Ain't nobody going to make the difference between Curtis Mayfield and a narrative story. You know what I'm talking about? I don't care what it was for. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Shoot. Shoot. Pop made movies for soundtracks. Nigga, he still would lie. You know what I'm talking about? Angel Dust. Then you remember the song White Lines running through my mind. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hold on, let me think. Now, we all knew about uh, what the nigga name. I be stroking. This is a nigga song. Oh, that's what the... nigga swinging. Nigga told you the song. 
Hollywood swing and nigga say, I'm gonna hit your wife, my wife, you get my wife, nigga. We swing. Yeah. <laughs> and we don't even want to talk about the Isaac brothers, all they sung about with fornicate. You call it what you want. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're who look at He talking about in between the sheets. That's not your wife, nigga. And whole time this nigga got on sequence tights. Mm hmm. Style of a homo. <laughs> they, and you know why they still on tour? Because Pan said you won't stop till I say stop. You think Ron Eisen still want to go from city to city at this age? Yeah, I know it. And pa and Pan say come around here and give me the kiss of shame because you won't get out here and do what I told you. To do. Yeah, cash in the dead brother check. Yeah, and get what? But Sue, Pan say you gonna sing and dance, nigga. Sing and dance. Pan say go sing and dance, nigga. My name is Pan. Because they have no choice. Now I, I sent it up, but I but y'all y'all go look up the Vlad TV interview with Paula Jai Parker, which if you don't know who that is, that was the chicken Friday who was playing the uh the ghetto chick ice cube girlfriend. And she said it so matter of factly and plainly, like, oh, Hollywood's blood in, blood out. So ain't no getting out. You know what I'm saying? Like she wasn't just saying it like, let me drop a, a strong nugget. It's just casual conversation. Like, it's blood in, blood out. Ain't no getting out. You keep working until they say we don't want you no more. That's why the, the Rolling Stones, check it. The Rolling Stones just left here. Mick Jagger probably about 85 years old. No cap. You know what I'm saying? Now, y'all been, the Isley Brothers been in the music game since the 50s. So you don't think after that longer time of touring that a nigga want to stop? I know you niggas might. Yeah, the money's nice, but you still want to go to 30, 40, 50 cities? And you still going because ain't no retirement. Pants say get up and dance. You're going to get up and dance. You know what I'm saying? I know Mick Jagger want to stop. He got to want to stop. The thing look like if you blow on his body too hard, pause, he going to die. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Because I know there's a clip of Bob where he was like, he said it like the master said, I can't stop. I got to keep going. He said, I made a contract with the master. I got to keep going. And Ed Bradley, he's dead now. I don't know if y'all ever watched 60 Minutes, but that was the black dude who was a correspondent on there. He was like, who you made? A, who, who's the master? He's like, hey, you know who the master is. Who's the master? Like they, he, he messing with him because, you know, you fool with Pam. And you, and you can't say it and you can't stop. They can't stop. They got to go. You see most performers perform all the way up to the day they die. Yeah, they can't stop. They have to keep going. Pan say you going to sing and dance. And, or unless they, they threw with you like they is with R. Kelly. They threw with R. Kelly. Your time is up. Oh, they did. Your time is up. Now R. Kelly got to go up the road. He probably won't do a long, long time. Because he wasn't doing... Now, don't get it wrong. The nigga is a coochie pervert. You know what I'm saying? He's he's, he's definitely an odd man. But uh, but those people promoted and supported him in what he was doing. A man cannot go along and participate in that manner of sexual perversion in the field that he's in and people are not aware of and supporting him in that endeavor. And you can tell that they choose for them. It's the thing. Because how does all white men, all white ladies, like, oh, we found a tape in our basement? Out of nowhere. That's how you know that this. And, but this is what they do, though. This is the things that they do. They get you on video or or in photographs and compromising positions to use that as leverage to get you to do what I want you to do. And then when I'm through with you, I can trot it out at any time. I told you that this nigga all of a sudden, all these videos and all this stuff pop up. Where this stuff been at for the last 30 years? Where was this at when he was touching on Sparkle Niece? Y'all had it then, ain't nobody said, because we still needed him to play the role of Pan. Keep on playing that flute so them young boys can come over here so we can get them. Now we don't need you anymore. Main reason why they don't need him anymore, because they're, they're, they're on goddess worship now. So what purpose do you serve? Because regardless of how perverted he is, that nigga is a patriarchal figure. You know what I'm saying? You are not coming into R. Kelly's house as a woman and running it. You know what I'm talking about? He ain't with it. Oh, yeah. He ain't about <laughs> 
We're in a matriarchal goddess worship. That's what we're in. Who did who gets in? You talking about Harvey Weinstein? Oh no, he just got arrested. He just got arrested. He just got arrested. No, nah, they don't move that fast. He just got knocked. Isaiah 51. I mean, he probably will because they have evidence. Isaiah 51 to 17. They have evidence, so I know he did because it's over. It's over. When they threw with you, they threw with you. Yeah, they got, but, but the reason why they ain't through with Harvey Weinstein because he's a Kazar. So they're going to look out for him. They're going to take care of him. Harvey Weinstein, he a Jew. Epstein is a Jew, but they take care of their people, though. But they, even then, they, even if you're not of their people, you have to understand. And all this stuff is still dealing with what's going on in Babylon and how Babylon moved because that's confusion and perversion. And that's what they're about. And they're going to keep that going. But if you don't fulfill their desires and means any longer, they discard of you. You know what I'm saying? That's it. It's period. Point blank. It's not, it, it ain't no simpler than that. And that's the difference between Satan and Yahuwah. Yahuwah doesn't discard people. He holds you down all the way to the end. It's not, oh, you serve. Only only thing is, if you if you serve Yahuwah and your purpose in Yahuwah is complete and he calls you to rest on your bed for a season to the day of resurrection. That's it. Once Satan get through with you, he's going to destroy you. And he's going to destroy you because you've been working destruction. So you get back what you what you reap, what you sow. Let's go, let's go, let's go. <laughs> That's what you get. Isaiah 51 and 17. Awake, awake, stand up, O Jerusalem, which has drunk at the hand of Yahuwah, the cup of his fury, and has drunk in the dregs of the cup of trembling and wrung them out. There is none guide among her. All the sons whom she brought forth, neither is there any to take her by the hand. All of the sons that she brought forth. Drop down about verse 22. Now, of course, directly, this is in regards to Yahuwah shot the night he drunk his cup. Also, you know, in Jeremiah 49, it speaks of how he said, oh, you will not drink this cup. You shall surely drink. It makes it make mention of that three times because that's how many times Yahusha asked for that cup to pass from him. But the very same cup of the violence and wrath of Yahuwah that Yahusha drunk, Babylon got to drink. That's why she's a golden cup in his hand. And all the difference is, is a different type of cup. I can't even say it's a different type of cup because the cup Yahusha drunk was the sins of the people. And that's what's in that cup. And Babylon been passing that cup to all the nations. And they've been drinking. It said, thus saith the Lord, Yahuwah, your Elohim, that plead the cause of his people. Behold, I've taken the hand of the cup of trembling, even the dregs of the cup of my fury. You shall drink it no more again. But I will put it into the hand of them that afflict you, which have said to your soul, bow down, that we may go over. And you have laid your body as the ground and as the streets of them that went over. So, as I did mention, the cup that Yahusha had, he took that cup and gave it to Babylon. Say, so you drink it. That's your wine. Come on back to Jeremiah 51. I just find it amazing that these prophets prophesying things that's going to happen centuries, centuries, centuries later. I feel Yeah, it's just like. That's how you know. That's why. Prophecy and Cause, and, and, and where you get that, and, and where you get that from is in Isaiah 46, where he say, you know, I told you these things that they, they, they were going to happen before they happen because I know that your brow is obstinate and your neck is iron sinew. Unless you say your idol said that this was going to happen. You know what I'm saying? He said that plain as day. He said, I know I had to tell you before it happened. Because I know you, nigga. You're trying to take credit for it. You know what I'm saying? That's why all these other deities ain't about nothing. Because none of them have no prophecy in it. Ain't no prophecy in the Quran. You know how I know? Because I read it. Ain't no prophecy in the Quran. Ain't no prophecy in no bag for getter. Ain't no prophecy in the meta netter, the Egyptian book of the dead. None of that. Just a bunch of double talk, if you will. 
And then what a lot of brothers say, y'all can't believe y'all follow that by. But if you notice when people attack the word, they don't attack no prophet. They try to say it's historically inaccurate or it's made up. They can't deal with the things that are prophesied in this text. They can't deal with that. You know what I mean? But they're not supposed to. Jeremiah 51 and 8. Babylon is suddenly fallen and destroyed. How for her? Take balm for, for her pain if she may be healed. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed for sake her. Let us go everyone into his own country for her judgment reach under heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. And about that last night, what he told you to do? Forsake her and go back where? Where you come from. Now you see how that tie into when he said the outcast of Israel, Moab, take them. Because you got to go. Hold on. It's all the same word, so nothing is going to be different than what's been stated by another person. Now, I just want to see what it was said when it said we would have healed Babylon, but it just says Rafa Bible. So we would have healed confusion, but instead, let them stay confused. You get from amongst it, which is one of the instances why you have to know and understand that if you are surrounded by people who constantly love dysfunction, disorder and confusion then you should separate yourself from them. you know what i'm saying and he's telling you that here we would have healed their confusion but he said but you know what but she's not healed forsake her. this is why he's saying proverbs you know forsake the foolish and live and go on the way of understanding because you because if you if you stay in an environment of dysfunction and disorder you will be ensnared and enraptured in that environment you will not defeat it you know what I'm saying? You cannot defeat a disorderly environment. You just have to remove yourself from it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down, you're not going to be able to do it. It doesn't matter who it is because all dysfunctional people want you to do is be mired in their dysfunction. You know what I'm saying? Because when you bring order and functionality to people who enjoy chaos, they're going to resist. If they haven't reached the stage that they want to come out of chaos, then you have to leave them alone. You know what I'm saying? Because it's it's only going to be injurious for you. It's not going to be injurious for them because they're used to operating in confusion. You know what I'm saying? And I've seen that happen before. It's a lot of dude. I'm like this. Well, I couldn't. I'm like, man, I, I'm glad I ain't grow up like this. I I wouldn't know what to do. You know what I'm saying? And you had to leave them alone. And that's why the book tell you. Matter of fact, Paul wrote a letter. What he told you not to eat with people who are what disorderly. You know what I'm saying? And he told you not to fool with them because it spreads like cancer. You know what I'm saying? That's why some people be saying certain things by certain rules, because a lot of rules do like to move in disorder. And all it is is just confusion. That's why I'm telling you, I need to be talking about, I'm confused. Baby, you confused. Ain't no confusion. Over I'm not confused. You know what I'm saying? And what I won't allow you to do is call, usually when somebody come with that, they're trying to make you confused. They're trying to pull you in to their confusion. You have to be wise enough to know they're doing that. Well, anybody, you know, I'm sorry to hear that. You know, they're here. Here's a way you can solve that problem. And usually when you give them a way to solve that problem, guess what they do? I'm going to call you back. You know what I'm saying? Or I'm going to do this here. Oh, you didn't want a solution. So stay over there. You know what I'm saying? Because I can't allow you to destroy me. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what's going to happen. There's plenty of niggas we grew up with. Like I said, my homeboy, one of my homeboys, that nigga like to cause chaos all the time. And nigga, like I said, like a nigga called a buddy jumped on me, bro. I'd be like, boy, we're going to find out what happened first. Cause nigga, you ain't finna send us on no dummy mission, mission get us killed. You know what I'm saying? Because we know you like chaos. We know you like it. But you are, and our mindset is, is that if you my nigga, you my nigga, and I'm down with you for life, that ain't gonna change. But we got old enough to realize I'm not running behind you every time you say something happened. Because nine times out of ten, you did something stupid. And I'm not gonna lose my life behind your stupidity. You know what I'm saying? And you have to be wise enough to know that some people do not want function. Some people do not want order. And truth be told, I would say that 97 percent of people on this earth don't really want peace. Because peace is boring. You have to understand that it is boring. It's not fun. It's not exciting. Peace is just what it is. It's tranquil. You know how people say I want peace fishing, right? Is there excitement when you out there fishing? <laughs> and, it, and, and, and it would be considered to be what? Boring. Ain't nothing going on. You're just sitting there with a pole. You might have somebody to talk to, but it's not this. this. 
Yeah, but it, indeed, because some niggas go out there and fishing and they in utter chaos. They drunk. You know what I'm talking about? Doing all type of stupid stuff. Falling off the boat. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just using that as an example of that's what some people say they use for tranquility because tranquility is quietness and quietness is boring. This is why we mentioned before. That's why a lot of women like thugs because it's exciting for them. It's dysfunction. You know what I'm saying? Some people like dysfunction. That's why some niggas choose bald headed hoes. What they instead of calling them whores, now they want to call them a city girl. Now you're a city girl now instead of just being a whore. Nice way to call a woman a whore. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. Nice way to call her a whore. You know what I'm saying? And some niggas choose whores because they like the dysfunction. You know what I'm saying? She always arguing, fussing, and fighting. You know, seeing someone, oh, you turn me on when you get angry. Sir, something's wrong with you. Because that's dysfunction. How did dysfunction get you sexually aroused? But a lot of people say that. That's dysfunct. That's what somebody, they don't have an adult mind. They don't have a right mind. You getting angry is not going to arouse me. It's going to make me want to get away from you. Always yelling and screaming and fussing and fighting and this, that, there, and the third. You like this here. Oh, that just turned me on. Let's go in the room, girl. No, let's not go anywhere. Let's get you somebody to talk to. Let me take you to the law. You know what I'm saying? Nevertheless, you had to look at stuff like that, man. Like I said, but see, you, you usually don't want to do that because you have emotional attachments to people and now realizing that their mindsets can be deleterious to your to your whole life. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, nah. I got homeboy I grew up with, man. You know, I see him. I love man. It's all good. But I know I can't kick it with him on the type of time they own, even if we wasn't in the word. Like, I'm not on that. I can't participate in that. That's going to stunt my development. Jeremiah 51 and what? 10. Listen to what he said. You who have brought forth our righteousness, let us declare in Zion the work of Yahuwah our Elohim. Make the bright arrows, arrows, gather the shields. You who have raised up the Ruach of the kings of the Medes for his devices against Babylon to destroy it, because it is the vengeance of Yahuwah and the vengeance of his temple. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up watchmen, prepare the ambushes. For you who have both devised and done that which he has spoken against the inhabitants of Babylon. So let me ask you this question. One, he said, you who have brought forth our righteousness, we need to declare his work in Zion. And then two, he said to set up watchmen. So what do you think this could mean? Set up watchmen. I'm going to just get this word for ambushes real quick. <laughs> Oh, grandma done fell down. That word is a rod. To lie in wait, to lay in ambush. When you see when you see that, let you who have brought forth our righteousness, all you need to go do go do is look at First Corinthians chapter one, about verse 30, 31, and it says how Hamashiach has been made righteousness for us. Yahushua is the righteousness of Allahim. So when he's coming forth to show forth that work, which I had son this further down in the chapter, we won't get to it now. Y'all will and we'll get to it next week. He's going to show forth the work of his wrath. When he talking about set watchmen, that's men to preach that word and let them know what's coming. Because y'all already know how you would do. Amos chapter 3 says, surely you would do nothing. But he gives his secret to his servants to prophet. You who has never destroyed any city, civilization, nation of people without warning them first. He has never done that. You will be warned at least two or three times because he got to establish that witness. Before he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, they were warned. Do you know what I'm saying? Before he destroyed Egypt, they were warned. Yahuwah just doesn't go by and say, I'm going to kill them. They're wicked. It doesn't operate that way. He's going to give you an opportunity to stop doing what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And when you decide that you want to continue to be wicked, then he will decide that he will wipe out your existence from off the earth and your name from under heaven. Jeremiah 51 and 13. Now we can get into something else. Oh, you that dwell upon many waters, abundant in treasures, your end is come and the measure of your covenants. So let's look at Revelation 17 because he said, oh, you that dwell upon many waters. Revelation 17 gives insight into that. Many people already know what that insight is. But for those who don't, 
We shall look at it. Some things we're not going back over and reading again because we've already read it. But some things we must. 17 and 9. Here is the mind which have wisdom. The seven heads are the seven mountains on which the woman sit. Remember, we talked about that. These are seven governments. That's why he said in that place that there's five kings. One is fallen and one is. This ain't got nothing to do with no doggone Rome. You know what I'm saying? And he tinyly tells you that there are not seven kings in Rome. Go ahead. Yes, indeed. But he tells you what those seven mountains really are right after that. Go ahead, let's stand. I'm talking about that. Yeah, he tells you, like, we go, people got to read it. I just said it a little earlier. He tells you who those seven mountains are right behind it. And it said, There are seven kings, five were fallen. One is, the other is not yet come. And when he come, he must continue a short space. And the beast that was and is not, and even he is, the eight, and is of the seven, and go into perdition. Meaning, he's counted amongst those seven kings. So it's not Rome, and he's telling you this plainly. And if you go back and check in Daniel, Daniel tells you this plainly. It's not Rome. It's not a physical location. Mountains are always representative of government and rule. All you got to do is read Micah, Malachi chapter four. I mean, Micah chapter four, Isaiah chapter two and numerous other. Even when it tell you in Isaiah nine, the government will rest on his shoulder. The mountains were always considered for government. So this is not Rome. He say, uh, verse 12, the 10 horns which you saw are 10 kings which received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings one hour with the beast. So before these 10 kings or these seven horns take over, they nobodies. But then when the beast take over, they get a chance to run with him. You know what I'm talking about? And that's it. And then notice the number that it is. It's 11. Because nine times out of 10, they're probably trying to mimic Jacob and his children. You know what I'm saying? Don't quote me on that, though. But it looks that way. Nevertheless, these have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. So basically what you see is 17 men who are going to be working in concert with the man of sin. You know what I'm saying? That's it. And they all have one mind to do one thing, and that's fight you. That's it. That's their plan. Said these shall make war with the lamb, and the lamb shall overcome him, for he is the Lord of lords, king of kings. And they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So this is what they have a mind to do. They all have a mind to fight the lamb. That's their objective. That's their goal. That's what they're out to do. So again, does that sound like they're fighting you because you're Israel? They got a problem with Elohim. Let's look at the next thing it says. He said unto me, the waters which you saw where the whore sit. Because I didn't read verse one where it says that. Well, we read it a few that she sits upon many waters. Where the whore sit are peoples, multitudes, nations and tongues. So when you go back in Jeremiah 51, you see Jeremiah 51 is telling you the same thing. Oh, you that dwell in many waters. She's abundant in treasures. Why is she abundant in treasures? Because of the multitude, nations and peoples and tongues who have waxed rich by the cup of her fornication of which they have been drinking. That's why she says that it describes her as being a. Her end is come and the measure of her covetousness because she coveted and desired the wealth of these people. Well, remember, what did it say about the beast that all nations and tongues would do what? Worship him. So why wouldn't they do that with Babylon if Babylon is where he kicking his game at along with he's got two places. right? He wants to go in Jerusalem and sit in the throne of Elohim and declare he God. But he also is operating out of Babylon, as you can clearly see. Maybe not necessarily operating directly as being there, but that's his kingdom. And why is that his kingdom? Because he is the same as his predecessor predecessor Nebuchadnezzar now the beast had the whole world delivered into his hand correct did not all nations tongues and people worship Nebuchadnezzar that was from the doing of you Jeremiah 28 then we come right back to Revelation 17 and I read y'all that Isaiah 46 after this Jeremiah 28 
see what verse I want, man. Jeremiah 28 and 12. It said, uh, then the word of you who came unto Jeremiah the prophet after that, Hananiah the prophet had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith you who are you have broken the yokes of wood, but you shall make them for yokes of iron. But thus saith you who are hosts, the Elohim of Yasharal. I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I've given him the beasts of the field also. That's no different than all those whose names are not written in the Lamb's book of life. They will serve the beast. That's what Yahuwah has determined. And that is what will happen. Let's take ourselves over here to Isaiah 46. But see, a lot of people don't want to hear that because that don't make you feel good inside. Oh, that's not the chapter, so that's why. But it's 48. I said 46. It's 48. Isaiah 48. We can pick it up at verse 1. It's Isaiah 48, not 46. That's my fault. Hear you this, O house of Jacob, which are called by the name of Yasharal, and are come forth out of the waters of Yehuda, which swear by the name of Yehuda and make mention of the Elohim of Yasharal, but not in truth nor in righteousness. That's what we see now. We didn't talk about that before. People make mention of the name of Yahuwah, but not in faith and definitely not in what's right. They call themselves of the Kadar city and stay themselves upon the Elohim of Yasharal. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. I have declared the former things from the beginning. They went forth out of my mouth and I showed them. I did them suddenly and they came to pass because I knew that you are obstinate and your neck is an iron sinew and your brow brass. I have from the beginning declared it to you before it came to pass. I showed it to you, lest you should say my idol have done them, my graven image and my molten image have commanded them. Here I let you know. And notice that he said he told you the former things from the beginning. He let you know, I'm telling you the whole play. This is why Yahushua said, he said, I tell you these things before they happen. So when they come to pass, that you will know that I am he. Because everything his father do, he do likewise. You got to understand and know that. Because guess what? If he didn't let it be known, what would, what would people be out here doing? Molak said it. You know what I'm saying? And why I said it. My idol told me. That's what these women be out here. I'm a goddess. I was talking to my home about it. You already know what that is. That's just covering up insecurities. You don't really love yourself. So you got to come up and, and create a create an altar, an image, a caricature, if you will, to make yourself feel better about yourself because you know nobody don't like the real you. Why do you think people wear masks and put on care because they feel like the real you won't be accepted? You know what I'm saying? Because you That's bad teaching. Because that's one West teaching. Both of them. Both of those doctrines are one West teachings. You gotta say that they consider themselves prophets or Oh yeah, they both would definitely say the prophets are bad. They've definitely said that. That's IUIC slogan. The prophets are back. That's their slogan. They say you ain't no prophet because you reading out the book, sir. Anybody read out? So, 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 if Mordecai read out the book, is he a prophet? What about Isaiah? What about what about Mari? What about King? What about Eugene back there? Does that make Eugene a prophet? It does not make Eugene a prophet. Sir. It does not make Eugene. A prophet. Back to Revelation seventeen. You notice, too, when they talk about them seven mountains being wrong, that they never talk about them ten horns. But he tell you right here what these ten horns going to do. These ten horns are the one who's going to destroy Babylon, which goes back to what we didn't already about, read about Jeremiah, about him bringing kings and people to bend the bow to destroy them. All he did, all, all, well, I didn't say all he did, but in this particular matter, John just gets the completion of what's been told and who's going to execute it. Because Jeremiah had already laid all this out. It says, And the ten horns which you saw upon the beast, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. So even though they're down with the beast, they hate the whore. See, they ain't got no problem with the beast. Remember, the whore is riding upon the beast. The beast supports the whore. The, the, the horns are on the whore's head. Remember, it says, you know, I saw you the great whore. She was arrayed in scarlet, 
upon her forehead, Mystery Babylon, and she has seven vials. Let me find out where it misses that specifically because the verse is escaping. Oh, right on her head. She had a having seven heads and ten horns. Well, that's on the beast. No, but the beast ain't got no problem. It's the ten horns who down with the beast. They hate the horn. Because you remember what we read in Jeremiah 51, y'all done put it in their heart to hate the whore, to destroy her. You know what I'm saying? The beast is reserved for one man and one man alone. And that's Yahusha HaMashiach. That's all him. You know what I'm saying? The, the, in Daniel chapter 8, he said he'll be destroyed without hand. The prince of princes will destroy him without hand. See, that's that's one of them instances. You can kill the rest of them niggas. Save him for me. I'm out. And that's how that goes. Say for Allah, he may put in their hearts to fulfill his will and to agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of Allah, he shall be fulfilled. So once Babylon moved out of the way, then these men are going to give all their kingdoms to the beast. And then it's over. You know what I'm saying? And then it's over because the beast was working in concert with Babylon. That's why she's riding on top of him. He's supporting her. But these other 10 kings, these seven heads and these 10 horns are people who are supporting him. You know what I'm saying? And they don't like this whore. Ain't no, look at man, ain't no real man walking. Ain't no king ever like the whore. That's why they, that's why they want to kill him. If you have a king or ruling class mentality, you're not going to like a whore. The horse is in the water. That means, that means she got control over the people. And she getting all the paper. Yeah, the ten kingdoms is yeah, the ones that's really got their hands. Is like it is now? Yeah. The whole world here, but it ain't but ten kingdoms. That's that 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 makes Paul Straight up. Everybody else is falling in line. And and the beasts get autonomy for a very very short time period. You know what I'm saying? Like he was ruling, but now he gonna have complete autonomy. You go ahead. You've been running the thing anyway. See, we basically we've been together. You the head nigga, but we still here. After that, it's a complete and total dictatorship. And he's saying the woman which you saw is the great city which reigned over the kings of the earth. That's why people say it's Rome. You know what I'm saying? Now, Rome does promote Babylonian mystery school worship to the utmost. You know what I'm saying? But the Catholic Church is nothing but uh, what I tell you back. You see, they're, they're reigning over the earth based off how the text describes it because of her economic influence. You know what I'm saying? This is Babylon. No, I'm talking about the beast himself is kicking it in Jerusalem. And that woman is Babylon. Because remember, that's the, uh, the great whore. So that city is Babylon. He's just describing her as a as a whore. So then you look at that. Now, once she once they get her out of the way, that's why they're able to give their kingdom over to the beast. So they ended up still in the same position that they were in to begin with. Someone's ruling over you. But I guess they just really hated that whore. But if you're a man, you don't pretty much like whores too tough anyway. You know what I'm saying? You can you, you can tolerate them. That's what a lot of our women messed up now because they've been whores all their life and 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 men are taking them seriously. And then they don't even know how to respond and to be taken seriously because they know that they're a whore. <laughs> Nevertheless, Jeremiah 51. <laughs> no, it's, it's unfortunate for you, Abigail. Where we at? Verse 14 of Jeremiah 51. We're going to get ready to wrap this up for the day of the morning. Oh, yeah. This is, what, this is what I wanted y'all to hear when he say, right? Verse 14. Yahuwah of hosts, I've sworn by myself, saying, surely I will fill you with men as with caterpillars, and they shall lift up a shout against you, which we basically just seen. Them 10 kings, go. you don't think they're going to not bring a strong army with them? It says, he has made the earth by his power, and he established the world by his wisdom and he stretched out the heaven by his understanding. When he uttered his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens. He caused the vapors to ascend to the ends of the earth. He made lightness with rain and bring forth the wind out of his treasures. 
Now, when you hear that, when he say he uttered his voice, there's a multitude of waters in the heavens. What's the first thing come to your mind? Hmm? Malachi. The verse say he uttered his voice, multitude of waters come forth in heaven. What's the first thing? The creation. He telling you about his. He letting you know I am the creator of heaven and earth. Because he told you that in the beginning that he said, I made the earth by my power. Remember, he said the earth was void and full of darkness. And he said, I stretched out the, uh, and established the world by my wisdom or his skill and made the heavens by my understanding of my insight. And he told you that the heavens was for what? For times and for seasons. And the heavens bear witness of the gospel of Yahusha. And he said, you know what? I utter my voice and it's waters in the heavens. Play with it. I bring all of that. He's a reasserting to these people who he is and what he has done. Listen, but look when he, how he describes man. Every man is brutish by his knowledge. You know what it means to be brutish? To be brutish for in layman's term is to be calm. We'll pull it out in pause in, uh, in the Hebrew in just a moment. The word brutish is ba'ar. It is somebody who is to be consumed, kindled, and burnt up. So every man will be burnt up who moves by his own knowledge. This is why he say don't lean on your own understanding. Because if you want to lean on your own knowledge, you're going to be destroyed. He say every founder is founded by the graven image for his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. They are vanity, the work of errors, in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. The portion of Jacob is not like them. He is the former of all things. And Yasharal is the rod of his inheritance. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. Now, you know, a lot of people, a lot of brews will tell you, see, we're going to kill the people. We his battle axe. But listen to what he said. He said that he's the what of all things. Former. And that's the word yet saw. And that's something that is preordained, predetermined, preplanned. Yod, sod, and rosh. What would you think for use for that if you're talking about yod, sod, and rosh? So when you look at the portion of Jacob is not like them, remember what they said about the beast? Who is like unto the beast? Ain't that what they said? Who like unto the beast? Now, hold on. I, I hold on. Give me one second. That word portion is, is share, part, or territory. Parcel of land or one's possession. So he say his possession is not like them. He's the rod of his inheritance. Who of hosts is his name. What you say now, sir? I said the Anybody else? It's predetermined, form, fashion, or predetermined or preordained. Now, what I have is the right hand is the way to the highest. Oh. And that's Yahusha. And remember, he was slain from what? Foundation of the world. We talked about being chosen a four time last night. So Yahusha is that portion, that possession, because who does Yahusha belong to? His father. And he is not like any of these people. He is the form of all things. And we are the are the rod of his inheritance. You know what I'm saying? Verse 20. You are my battle axe and weapons of war, for with you will I break in pieces the nations, and with you will I destroy kingdoms. That's not us, because we already read that in Revelation 19 last night. We could read Isaiah 63 for that. We could read Genesis 49 for that. Yahusha is his battle axe and weapon of war. That's who he's using. And he say nowhere that Yasharal was going to go around here and destroy no nations. You getting saved. How you getting saved and fight? 
That's a lot of work to do. Don't think you're going to be able to pull that off. He's saying, with you, I will break in pieces the horse and his rider. And with you, will I break in pieces the chariot and his rider? With you also, will I break in pieces man and woman? With you, will I break, break in pieces old and young? And with you, will I break in pieces the young and the maid? Everybody goes. Everybody gets a sword. Everybody dies. And you know what I take you back to? Ezekiel chapter 9. I caught you around there worshiping them idol gods. And he said, kill everybody who don't got that mark in their forehead. Young and old. And he saying, start at my house. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of people ain't going to hear that. He going to kill babies? Yeah, your baby's dying. Because if you didn't know, the children of the wicked are made for the sword. So that's what they there for. You got a problem with it? Take it up with you when you stand before him. Talk to him about it. Don't talk to me about it. Because I'm not going to go back and forth with you about it. You know what I'm saying? Straight up and down. I could kill that. How he kill children? Shoot, he made it. Kill what he want to kill. How you make an idol and worship it? That's the better question. This is the next thing he say. I will break also in pieces with you the shepherd and his flock. And with you, I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. And with you, I will break in pieces captains and rulers. All that's going back to what we know, how they gather themselves up to fight. Everybody dying. That's why they say they're going to see him and well because of it. He said, and I will render unto Babylon and all the inhabitants of Chaldea all the evil that they have done in Zion in your sight, saith Yahuwah. Behold, I'm against you, O destroying mountain. You see how you say that? Destroying mountain. I'm against you, you destroying government. That's why we read in Revelation, he said he's going to destroy those who destroy the earth. Say of Yahuwah, which destroy all the earth, and I will stretch out my hand upon you and roll down from the rocks and will make you a burnt mountain. And they shall not take of you a stone for a corner, nor a stone for foundations, but you shall be desolate forever. And, and you can and you can see why how all these things play in the, in the, in the concert. It's not none, none of this fantastical. And this is no disrespect to anybody who's taught or believed other things. But you just have to let the text speak for itself. And you see the harmony and simplicity of what's going to occur. And then it's a lot easier to endure spiritually when you see it. But hallelujah for Yahusha and the word. We'll stop right there. So does anybody have any questions first and foremost? about the things that pertain to Babylon and how it's going to go down versus what we've looked at today. We still have about another 30 some odd verses left in this chapter. Oh yeah, without question. Oh, yeah. It's not that they damn. He's just saying that they're made for the sword. They're made to be killed. So like if you see a family and a lady be like all her sons got shot and killed because they were made for that purpose because you wicked. You know what I'm saying? So that's what I made them for. They made for that sword. Oh no, that don't work like that. Every man going to hell for his own sins. You, you going to hell because your people were stupid and they ain't teach you the way you were, so you start. I just seen somebody talking about you can't baptize kids. And say, I mean, because if you're not set apart, then they wouldn't be set apart. But that's not because of their sins or your sins. It's just because you wicked all the way around the board. Absolutely. Because you wicked. You not set apart. You ain't got no Ruach in you, so how is your children clean? It comes down to this particular point right here. Even if you follow in the word, see, once you receive the Ruach, you clean. That's why he said to Abraham, he said, I know Abraham that he'll do justice and judgment and teach his household. So if you are unsanctified, how would your children be sanctified? They couldn't be. So therefore, if they would perish, they're going to die in an unclean state because you don't have the Ruach. So therefore, you don't have evidence of the covenant. So you scar. You know what I'm saying? Now, of course, once they get up to old enough to serve you who are on their own, which is when they can make a conscious decision to do that, there is no set age. Then that's on them. 
But if you know that they're not at that age, then it would be wise for you to seek the Ruach HaKadosh that your children would be sanctified. Because if not, they're not sanctified. Do you know what I'm saying? So therefore, you would put them at risk. But I would mention how the lady was like, you can't baptize kids. And I'm like, surely you forgot that there were children going through the Red Sea. And he said that the Red Sea was a sign of baptism. Do you know what I'm saying? Because they were included. The children were included in the covenant right along with their parents. So when you get joined to the covenant, your children are included in the covenant right along with you. Why? Because you do justice and judgment and keep the way of your and teach it to your household. Let me find a verse what I'm talking about. Right here. Job 27 and 14 is one of them. When they talk about it, they say this is the this is verse 13. This is the portion of a wicked man with Allahim and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the almighty. If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. And those that remain of him shall be buried in death and his widow shall not weep. That's how you will feel about wicked people. He has no concern. Do you know what I'm saying? He has no concern about your offspring, your wives, or nothing of your household. He hates everything that's attached to you. And that's a hard saying only because uh, nobody tells us that. You know what I'm saying? People always tell you God loves children and fools. No, he loves the righteous. That's who he loves. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not righteous, he doesn't love you. He said he loves those that love him. That's what he said. Do you know what I'm saying? And he said, all you that love you who hate evil and do good. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, I mean, it's the same token. Like if you in the word and you serve you and you and you and you doing and you in the covenant and your children pass, your children straight. If you're not in covenant, you have a problem. It's really just that simple. Do you know what I'm saying? You got to be in covenant. If you're not in covenant, who does not recognize you. Because he said he showed mercy to thousands of them who keep his covenant. And that's the conversation people don't like to have either. Oh, he definitely didn't love those kids who were mocking Elijah. He definitely brought that she bear out there and took, took 46 children out. With no hesitation either. And I told you, I done had conversations with people. What type of God would do that? The type of God that don't like children mocking his prophets. So what you want me to say? That just saying right in your mind. I find no problem with it whatsoever. You're a crazy individual. I just might be. <laughs> Nevertheless, I have no problem with it. He saw fit for 46 children to die by the hand of a bear. I say praise be to Yah. Let his judgment be executed in its fullness. And if he see fit to kill 175 children by a bear, then praise be to Yah. If I had a child, his whole head got bust open, then praise be to Yah. That's what he saw fit to do. That's what Job said. He give, he take away. See, that's the problem. You get emotionally attached to temporary things. And that's why people fall off into negative mindsets and, and depressions and things of that nature, because you're attaching yourself to things that don't belong to you that are only here for a finite period of time. You know what I'm saying? Yahoo is the only thing that's infinite. Everything in this life is here for a finite period of time. So you cannot emotionally attach to temporary things. It will destroy your mental state. You know what I'm saying? Because then that's how people end up being mad with Yahuwah. Nobody, nowhere in the word, nowhere in life are you told how long you're going to live for. You shouldn't have to bury your kids. Who told you that? He never told you that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Definitely did. That's how Lot ended up with Abraham. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, that's just life. You don't know when you when your ticket going to get punched. So you can't be sitting. You But you're taught to have this expectation that you're going to be here for a long time. Everybody, you know, people I always be tripping off. They died unexpectedly. There's no such thing as an unexpected death. All death. Death is to be expected. If Pac ain't have but one song that told the truth is that I see death around the corner because it is always around the corner. It's always around the corner. Every breath we take is one breath closer to the last. Do you know what I'm saying? Every day we live is one day closer to the last. Do you know what I'm saying? So there's not, no one dies unexpectedly. They died when they were supposed to. 
You know what I'm saying? But I bless everybody in the house. Y'all name of y'all. I appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Y'all willing. We pick this up again next week. Y'all know Trump is in atonement coming, so we need to start moving accordingly. It's about, about, a, uh, about a month and a half for Trumpers. Probably about a little under two months for, for, uh, for atonement. And about a good strong uh, two months for tabernacles. So, yeah, but you who are willing, we, y'all willing, we probably be finished out with Jeremiah 51 and looking at this whore Babylon. And we pretty much done ran through every amount of idolatrous character we can run through. We really be would be being redundant. You know what I'm saying? Of just mentioning people because they're just the same person, just with a different name. So. And then we'll get back to thoroughly going through Proverbs as we've been going through and pulling out calls what we what we're looking at. So y'all willing to the next time.